this but Thank you. Final weekend on our Aussie boxing calendar, and we're doing it all weekend with the first ever live doubleheader right here on Australia's sports leader Fox Sports. Tonight and tomorrow night, we're ringside and finishing 2011 with twice the punch. Tonight, we're in Melbourne with a four live fight card, just the four fights, but all genuine main events. During the week, sad times for the world of boxing. We lost the legendary Smokin' Joe Frazier, but that fight and fight her spirit is alive and well, never more evident than tonight here at the Pavilion as we check out what's on your boxing menu here tonight. And we start with a belter, 12 rounds for a regional title, but it's a matchup more so than the title that sparks our interest. Caesar Amongst remembered for his 2007 world title war with Michael Katsidis goes against Solomon Egberine. 50 combined fights, six combined losses only, two world-class athletes to get the party started. Then we move up in weight to the Cruiserweight division, again a regional title, the reward over 12. However, will it go 12? The crush and Russian, Viktor Oganov, now campaigning at the 90 kilogram limit, faces the unbeaten Aussie champ, Brad Hollywood Pitt. Our semi-main event is for the Australian light heavyweight title, the vacant title. Ten rounds is the distance in this state of origin affair from New South Wales, Michael Van Nimwegen, and from Victoria, the favourite, Blake Caparello. Our main event is part of the IBF World Title Challenger Box-Off Series in the middleweight division. Australian Sam Solomon and American-based Nigerian Urmaseli Albert. 36 minutes, the action awaits in our main event. Joining your inside, former national champion Chris McCullen. Four main events, where do we start? Yeah, it's going to be a cracker. And I guess if we look at the start, the main event, Urmaseli Albert versus Sam Solomon. Um, you know, I think both guys got a quality that they need to employ tonight. Sam Solomon, he's a very awkward style fighter. His punches in bunches, and I think if, uh, you know, he could give nightmares to uh, Emma Sali Elbert tonight. Elbert, the jab. He needs to use the jab to keep Sam Solomon off him. Let's take a look at the last time both these men fought. For Irma Sali Elbert, we saw him in action on main event boxing against the real deal Daniel Gill. Yeah, well, Albert likes to walk up and push, but I think tonight, if he pushes up with Sam Solomon, it could make it a very awkward fight. His best bet is to try and bring Sam on tonight, but I don't think that's going to happen. It could get ugly, tonight's main event, because this young American just pushes forward. He doesn't have a reverse. No, you're exactly right. Now we take a look at the last time we saw Sam Solomon. It was the last time Sam Solomon fought. Ninth month. 2010 is ring rust an issue? No, nah, not for Sam Solomon. He's very experienced. He's, he's always a fit guy. And look, like I said, 
his punches in bunches. That's what could cause Albert nightmares tonight. The semi-main event is for the vacant Australian light heavyweight title. Two brilliant young boxers technically, but it's always difficult with a lefty and a righty. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I think if uh, Blake Caprello doesn't use his feet tonight and doesn't use the ring, then, you know, he may put the fight towards Michael Van Namwegen. Van Namwegen's going to push forward, uh, try and be aggressive, and, and like he did here with Joel Burke. Now, we saw this earlier in the year in July, and Van Nimwegen, who beat the Professor Joel Burke, but in doing so, broke his hand. Yeah, he did. He's an aggressive style fighter. And really, tonight, that's what he's going to need to do. He'll need to put the pressure on Blake Caparello and not let Blake get into a rhythm. Speaking of Blake, we're going to take a look at Blake Caparello here. Last up start against Joseph Quajo. And very simply for this young Essendon boy, whoever and whatever has been put in front of him, he is steamed over. Yeah, that's what I love about Blake Caparello. He doesn't, he, he doesn't fear anyone. He'll get in front and he'll take anyone on, and that's what I love. A lefty and a righty, and it is a big bombing left hand from this man, Blake Caparello. Also tonight, you talk about contrasting styles. Brad Pitt, Victor Oganoff, that is the definition. Yeah, exactly. And I think for a cruiserweight, Brad Pitt has very fast hands. Probably the best jab in the business, and that'll be the punch for me tonight. If Brad Pitt then maybe bring his power shots in after round two or three, and for Oganoff, I'd be aiming the jab at the chest and try and send the power hand straight over the top. We look forward to your comments throughout the course of the evening. Also in commentary tonight, a very special guest. Four live fights coming your way on Fox Sports Friday Night Fights and it's showtime. Welcome to the Melbourne Pavilion, a state-of-the-art and purpose-built facility here in Flemington, Melbourne, Victoria and home to some absolute Aussie wars so far in 2011. Once again, the house full sign is up. Wherever you're watching on Australia's Sports Leader, sit down, relax and enjoy the show. First up, it is 12 three-minute rounds in the light welterweight division. It is for a regional title, but let's be honest, it's the battle that has got us intrigued here. Caesar Amonsot, at 26 years of age, is seven years the junior of Solomon Ekbarim. Height, reach, absolutely nothing and just under one kilo on the scales. It's time to get the party started in Melbourne. And for the official introduction, let's go centre ring to Mr Howard Lee. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Melbourne Pavilion. Brian Armatruda, Barry Michael Sports. It's bubbling here tonight with Simmons Holmes. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome to Sinaringa in the red corner from the Philippines via Campbelltown, New South Wales, season. Would you welcome in the blue corner, the defending champion tonight, Sullivan Egbarim from Marrickville, New South Wales, via Nigeria.
Twitter Barry Michael Sports welcome you to the Melbourne Pavilion this historic weekend for Fox Sports wall to wall professional boxing Melbourne tonight Sydney tomorrow night kings of the ring we get the show rolling it's party time 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Oriental Light Welterweight Championship your WBO supervisor from Carrara Queensland Mr Brad Vocale we do welcome first in the red corner wearing trunks of black white with a touch of red and blue from Campbelltown New South Wales Va Bohol in the Philippines training with Todd Magellan ex-Aussie champ who fought Manny Pacquiao in the Philippines more than a decade ago working out the East West Fight Club in Campbelltown remembered best for his epic battle against Australia's Michael Katsidis and Las Vegas 2007 professional record 26 fights 22 wins three losses one draw 12 inside the distance at 63.15 kilograms, the challenger, Augusto Caesar Amansa. And across the ring, from Marrickville, New South Wales, via Port Harcourt, Nigeria, former Australian light welterweight and welterweight champion, 33 years of age, head coach, two times world champion, Love More. Nadu. 25 fights, 21 wins, 3 losses, 11 inside the distance. Wearing limerick green trunks with a touch of white and black. The reigning and defending champion, the smiling assassin, Sullivan Egberheim. The referee at the bell, Bryce Betwistle, Andrew Campbell. Dale Westerman and Nico Williams on the 10-point mass system. 12 rounds of boxing. Chris Anderson, Jr., your timekeeper. Okay, gentlemen, you're both aware of the rules. We've spoken to the back room. You've got no questions. No questions from blue. No questions from red. All right, listen to my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Both these belts are good. All right, below this is low, right? Understand? Touch gloves now in the last round. Neither man wanted to engage in the stare down. And I can understand that. As it's the non-participator here at the commentary position. Ready. On the right side ready. of the ropes. We are ready, ready. for war. Ready. Right well to eight division. Uh, kicking it off on Fox Sports Friday Night Fights. 12 three-minute rounds for a regional belt. Now the light welterweight division. 63 and a half kilo. A 140 pound or right on 10 stone. It is... Monsot in the black and white, and in the green and white, Solomon Egberheim. We start with a right-hander versus a left-hander. Egberheim the right with that left foot forward. A Monsot, the lefty. Andy Raymond along with Chris McCullen calling the action for you tonight. Yeah, you can see uh, Solomon Egberheim trying to work around the outside. He won't stay still in front of uh, Caesar and Monson. If he does, it smells danger. Very cautious opening. The opening minute here. As we said in the opener, 50 combined fights, just six combined losses. So what you do have is two world-class athletes in our opener tonight. We boasted earlier four fights only live tonight but four genuine main events i think you'd have to dig in the archives a long way back to find a fight with such caliber opening the night you can see solomon Egmont trying to get on the outside of that front foot although caesar and monson then got on the outside and that is that's the key to fighting the left hander or for always uh Egmont lands a good right hand we are going to see that over the course of the night because in our semi-main event for the vacant Australian Light Heavyweight title, it's a right-hander versus a left-hander. And who would know what to expect in our main event with Albert and Solomon? Both can switch, do switch, and are happy to. But it's that lead foot, and whoever can get on the outside initially, safely, and then let them go. With two minutes down, one remaining in the opening round. A genuine feeling out round as Egberheim looks to counter. Yeah, it is. Two very experienced guys, and they're just having a look and seeing what's out there. Oh, as a Monson lands a left hand down the middle. Egberheim very wide in his stance. In fact, wider than I have seen before. That's him in the green and white. If we have a look at his feet... 
just how spread they are. Of course, yeah. a very decorated amateur who, who arrived in Australia for the Sydney 2000 Olympics decided, this joint's that good, I'm going to stay. And as he was one of many. Yeah, as did a lot of them. Part of the African Kings based out of South Australia. Majority have moved on to different states. And that's better from Sol. He needs to get behind the jab, even though it's not a main scoring punch, the, the left hand uh, onto the southpaw. But he needs to use that jab and give Caesar something to look at. Yeah, two-time world champion Love Mourna do calling the shots in the corner with Tommy McCurry there. Assisting. Now they could very well be Australian boxing's odd couple. <laughs> Certainly. Doing their thing with Solid Barime in the corner. Last time we saw Tommy was down here at this venue with Lenny Zappavinga. Yep, the uh, the upset loss to Armath Diaz. I'll tell you something, Cesar Amonson, former lightweight, you know, yep. obviously fought Michael Katsidis and, you know, at, at that fight probably put Michael Katsidis on the map in America, but Amonson looks very good up in weight up at yep. light welterweight. He looks like he's, he's filled out really good. He doesn't look overweight. He's got massive legs and I reckon he'll bring that power up with him. Right. Not that I'm ever one to talk about anyone's weight or offer any critique of any type, but it's, it's a topic we've discussed at length over the years in regards to, I guess most notably, Anthony Mundine and Danny Green, but for differing reasons. Anthony's coming down in divisions, and there are areas of concern that he doesn't look as healthy, he doesn't seem as healthy, as strong, and just as natural, whereas Danny fought at, at a weight that, that was very unnatural for, for so long, has since moved up into the cruiserweight division, and has filled out his body, and, th and that's where the, where he should be fighting. As a result, you know, physically, he just looks a whole lot better. Yeah, he does, you're right. And what Anthony Mundine is doing, it's very rare. So, I mean, that's a feat in its own. Whether it's right or wrong, that's up to Anthony Mundine. And, and look, Denny Green does look good at his weight, whether it be a little bit higher than, right. you know, maybe where he should Step be. Back, yep. Let's go. When I say the boys look good oh. at their weight, I'm obviously talking about boxing. As we all are. As good jab are. from uh, Solomon Eggermine. Halfway through round number two. Monsant has not been active. Is that going to play a role more so the later this fight goes? Well, I think you'll find both guys haven't fought for around 12 months, yep. so that advantage disappears for, for either fighter. But in saying that, I think they're both very experienced fighters and they'll, they'll handle that situation without a problem. Yeah, Monsant last fought in September of last year and uh, Egberheim in November of last year. Both down here at Flemington. I think uh, Caesar would be best putting a bit more pressure on Solomon uh, Eggermon. Try and back him up. Try and wear him down a little bit. Sol's a very flashy fighter. If you stay off him, he'll pick you off. Former national champion in two divisions, Solomon Eggberheim at welterweight and light welterweight. Undefeated in five Australian title fights as well. Trying to sneak through there with that straight right after setting up with doubling of the left hand over the top there left hook and acknowledged there by Amonsot yeah good shot from Solomon Eggermine we saw against that fight with Mick Katsidis Amonsot had a lot of success with the right uppercut or the lead uppercut I should say uh, when, you know he may bring that in get underneath the jab of uh, Solomon Egg Eggermine as the fight goes on don't hit him push his head down alright box round two Back to the corners they go, two rounds down, and potentially ten more remain. Gotta work that jab, mate. Use a jab. 
told you that you want your body to roll out. Can you get them close to That was a good exchange of them. You've got to keep everything short and tight if you can come in. One of the punches hurt you. A relatively slow start to rounds one and two, but as we look at the best parts of round number two, at times both fighters had their forward movements. In the red corner with Cesar Amonson is ex Aussie champ Tony Maiklin, who fought Manny Pacquiao many years ago. and. David Birchall in the corner assisting him. David with the principal in the corner for Michael Van Nimwege and a little bit later on this evening. If you want to keep up to date on the who, what, when, where and why in Aussie boxing and Friday night fights, join me on Twitter like the rest of the crazy crew and enthusiasts on there. Sir Joe and the bunch watching tonight, critiquing and enjoying, maybe even enjoying a cold one or two as well. We hope they're enjoying, we hope you're all enjoying wherever you may be watching. A great way to finish your working week. Let us do the work and let these boys provide the entertainment on Friday Night Fights. Up, right, watch back of the head. A little ambitious there was uh, Amon site. Right. Trying to open up a little bit, Chris, but really not closing the distance, not using his feet before using his hands. No, at the start of this round he came out behind a double jab looking for the left hook and that even though it didn't land, that's what he needs to do. He needs needs to get in behind those punches as Solomon has a good left hook. Followed up by another right and another right from Edgar Mine. Trying to cross through there with that right hand. The left is a little low here on Solomon. Maybe a sign that he's comfortable with what uh, Monsot is throwing at him on that side. One thing I've learned over the past few weeks, Andy, you can never get comfortable in the boxing ring. Once you start underestimating people, things can go wrong. Yeah, difficult night for the boys from the Logan Boxing Club on our last Friday night fights. That it was. With Trent Broadhurst beaten by Robert Berridge in the main event, but not all bad news for Trent. Understand he's announced his engagement earlier this week, so congratulations to the big guy up there in Brizzy. A good change in his life, that's for sure. One minute remaining in round number three. Good head movement there from Sol, and he counters with a left hook on Amotso. Amotso trying to walk him down now. And this is what I think he may, he may need to do. Put a bit more pressure on Sol. Don't sit on the outside where Solomon can have, you know, the best parts of his punches. Thirty seconds remaining, round number three. Both decorated amateurs that are happily and willingly going to warm themselves into this. That's the shot there. I think is going to work for uh, Caesar and Mozart. Twice now it's missed, but he's worked behind the jab and he's looking to create some power in his shots. They're composed boxers. They're composed young athletes. These two, aren't they? They certainly are. Caesar thought about it. He cocked the left hand. Not sure he understood what was supposed to happen there. Ready to move into round number four, and you look through the bios that are going to be uh, expertly put together by our good friend Tony Nobbs. You look at some of the best wins in the career of Solomon Egberon. Eddie Delic, Ernie Artango, Jody Crampton, Gary Comer, Sam Columban, Mick Shaw, Bobby Antonakos. 
Wow, isn't that a list? It's a real good list. And another good Indonesian fighter in that, Dowdy Bahari. Yep. I think he won uh, the P the Pabba title over there in that. That's a good feat to beat Dowdy Bahari. Good boxer, beat John Cottrell. Oh. Yep, beat him in nine rounds down here. Right. In fact, that was his last fight for oh. Solomon Ibrahim. And I think his instructions from Lovemore to do in the corner were perfect. No single punches. Put your punches together a bit more. If you throw a right hand, bring a left hook or double your right hand up. He said the same. Amonsot's only chance is to put a bit more pressure on and, and draw okay. Solomon Eggwine into a fight. Edging forward. Shadowing. As we saw statistically early, not a great deal separates, but when you look at them... In the ring, the fact that A, I guess Egbert Ryan, the feet are so far apart and he really crouches down where at times uh, a Monsot is fairly straight up and down. It really appears there's quite a, a height and reach advantage for a Monsot, but it's not the case, it's an illusion. Yeah, you're right, and, and Solomon is uh, a very fit looking guy, but if you look at the back on a Monsot, it's massive and it makes Sol look small in that. And this is what Caesar has to do. He needs to put pressure on Sol. Draw him into that fight that Love More to do. What doesn't want him in? Only the three losses in the career of Sol Ekbarim. One was, uh, well, the only knockout loss and a, 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 a astonishing a, a round nine KO to Don Don Sultan. Sol was winning the fight. And uh, this is going back 2003, 2004. Got caught, oh, got caught with an elbow. Yeah. As, yep. it, as it turned out, his only other two losses were to a young bloke who can go just all right. And I speak of Noafel Ben Rabar, an absolute superstar, world class athlete. And the most recent one of those losses was on the Danny Green Manny Siaka undercard in Perth in April of last year. Now there's a boxer that excites you the moment he steps into the ring. Doesn't he? What? Well, for Ben Rabar. He just oozes class, that guy. In an absolute war with one of the cornermen here tonight in Love Born to Do. I'd love to see number two, that's for sure. Punching down here, swiping wildly. Here's a Monsot. Yeah, this is what a Monsot needs to do. He needs to pressure up so. Yep. Now, of course, we were speaking about Love More to Do, a two-time world champion, a young man that has travelled the globe in search of titles, in search of fights, and he's been in some wars, like this one in South Africa against Cyclone Lacey. Look at the size difference there. Love More with a little tap, a little dance, and a little throw. They're not giving me combinations, I need to see some combinations, okay? okay. I don't want single punches, Sol. Sol, I don't get a sleep, man. Okay? Well, watch for his right hook, okay? So the first one is right hook. Once he did first the jab, I want you to push him. Good. Round five, we move into. Box. And I get the feeling things are, are going to warm right up and reasonably shortly. Both guys have had. 12 to 14 months out of the ring so the slow start was expected by many experts and that's eventuated Ooh, and you can you can hear the corner of uh solomon egbermine a little bit uh you know trying to urge soul on a little bit not to to get too comfortable in there i thought that was a mozart's best round um the last round as he's trying to now put more pressure again on solomon egbermine Zegbarim on the back foot, moving to his right, moving away from the jab of Monsot. Both guys very light on their feet, two minutes remaining in the fifth. Oh, good left hand down the middle from a Monsot. Oh, there it 
starting to exchange now. The volume has been turned right up on the power. You speak about that straight right hand as the way to beat a southpaw. You hear that phrase and that, that cliche, if you like, often, but it's a mirror. It's the left hand of the, the exactly. and the straight one is yep. how the lefties beat it's us a real, righties. Yeah, it's a real chess match. How, you know, who can win that, that lead foot? Who can win that lead hand? And then that sets everything up. Swiftly to his left, avoiding the power hand oh. was Egg Barime. Some big shots thrown here. Oh, the power really has stepped up. It's up two gears. A lot of these being caught on shoulder, Break. forearm, glove. Won't be too long till oh. one's not. That's the law of averages, isn't it? Free punch combination there by Egg Barime. Well seen by him on site. Soul changes levels there. Break! Step back. I say break, step back. Are you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right. Box. Often it gets a little ugly with that right and left as back fatigue ahead. sets in. Nice move there from Amotsa. Tried to tangle the feet up of uh, Edgar Bain. Break! Step back. Step back. Step Ooh. back. Big. Little Willie. A little bit of spice for the second half of the fight. How there hasn't been a head clash as yet, I will never know. But I think it'll be a pretty short odds there will be over the next couple of rounds. Keep working, brother. Keep working. Don't go stupid, right? Just yeah. keep everything in place. Be sharp, smart. That looks looking good now. It's starting to get more to his body. Look slowly down. He's slowly breaking it down. As we look at round number five, Caesar and Monson put the pressure on, and the overhand is the big punch for Caesar. So we look at him working. Right hook comes over the top. Dancing and he's laughing in the corner with Tony Maitland. He's relaxed, he's enjoying, he's confident. Back, 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 back. Surely, when you get up off your stool and you're struggling on the other side of the ring, that has got to start playing games with your mind at some stage. Yeah, I agree. And the rounds four and five, he's, he's been a different fighter, Caesar and Mozza. Bit more bounce in his step and a bit more willing to, to engage. And Oh, nice little move there from Solomon Eggbrain. Uh, Gonna get a warning for it. Dane, listen, you pay attention, all right? Okay. Unsportsmanlike conduct, I'll take a point off you. You do that again, understand me? Okay. Right, all right. Box! Caesar comes in to try and make him pay for that. Directing that initial shot oh. down low. Good straight left hand from him on site. Eggbrain on the back foot, creeping around to his left changing his levels and doing so effectively a minute almost into round number six. Egberheim's got to put his punches together like his corner vast. Sitting off throwing his ones or not, not putting enough power on the shot to back him on shot up, that's just danger. As they get tangled over in the neutral corner. Nice work from Amodsok, gets out of there, back on the attack. It's just starting to get a little bit scrappy at the moment. Sol's Sol's power seems to have la seems to have dropped off a little bit from uh, round number three. Yeah, so is that intent from Ibrahim as Monsot awkwardly pops out his jab, his right hand. Minute remaining in the sixth round. Is that inactivity that you spoke about, Andy? Will that come into play? Well, as you said, in, in theory, and theory's wonderful, theory doesn't put gloves on, but in theory, 
both guys have been out of the ring for a similar period of time so it should cancel itself out that's right and with the experience neither guy should have uh, that sort of problem unless Sol's just taking a rest as he moves around and eats a jab from a mozza Thirty seconds left in the sixth. Up next, Brad Pitt, Victor Oganoff at Cruiserweight. We work towards our main event here tonight, part of the IBF middleweight box off series. Oh, oh Monsot, arguably the punch of the fight thus far. Yes, yeah, certainly was. Left hand, solid, and Solomon Egmont, he felt it. As he answers back with his own right hand. Defensively, Egberheim very good with his feet. There's so many different ways to avoid punches. He avoids most using his feet and being clever. Yeah, I think that was the key for him tonight. He had yeah. to use his feet and not stand still in front of a mod side. Okay, let's check out round number six. The illegal shot, there it was from Solomon Egmont. The left hand, here it is. Oh, that's the heads coming together. You saw the left hand earlier from the mod site. There it is. That's six rounds down, and I think you could pretty, uh, pretty well state a case for suggesting maybe Solomon Ebrahim won the first three rounds. Maybe the rounds four, five, six could well have been won by Caesar Amonsot, which would have it even as this second half of the fight starts. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the first round very hard to score because neither fighter did much. But Caesar's had the better of rounds four, five, and six, that's for sure. Our three ringside judges, should we require them, Renika Williams, Andrew Campbell, and the very good looking Diamond Dale Westerman, who was one of the superstars of Fox Sports Friday Night Fights for so many years, wasn't he in some wars? Kickboxing and boxing. Sometimes not even in a ring. We're not allowed to talk about those ones. One minute down, two remaining round. Number seven it is Caesar Amonsot in the black and white. Solomon Egberheim in the green and white. A little awkward with that lead hand and that lead arm. That's not where Sol needs to be. That's, that's trouble for him in there. That's where Amonsot wants you. Sol's best bet is to work on the outside as he eats a right hook on the equilibrium on top of the ear. He could be in some trouble here. Gets out of there, turns nicely and does so. Throwing punches. Been there, seen it and done it before as Egberheim. 85 amateur fights, this is 25th professional bout. Oh, he's down the left hand. Ryan. And standing in front of him was a Monsot raising his arms. Five, six, seven. Hey, look at me, let's go. All right. Box. Turning point round number seven, potentially. The feet may have got tangled a little bit, but the left hand definitely landed down the Box. middle. We'll be good to have a look at that one again. And we will in the break. His soul rattled here. Certainly going to be a far more desperate here in his offense, more cautious in his defense. But a big round, round number seven for the 26 year old, originally from Bahol, the Philippines, now based down to southwest Sydney in Campbelltown. Step back. Speak of Caesar Amonsot. He's certainly looking the stronger fighter at the moment, Amonsot. 
Sol's going to have to do something different to try and break the rhythm of Amonso. Bell sounds round seven ends. Not a good one for that man, Solomon Igbarine, but a good one for Caesar Amonso. We really have to do something. So we go caught because you keep moving their way. I told you move to the left. You better keep your your left foot on the outside. And so you need to, you need to give me combinations. You're not sure like combinations. Three, three, okay. suck it up. Let us not give me the one, two, three. One, Round two, seven. Here. Dive right in. Stumbling, stumbles uh, Solomon Ekbarim a little bit as Caesar Monson keeps the pressure on and we'll see the left hand coming. Yeah, what's the front foot of Amonson as it tangles up and steps on Solomon Ekbarim's front foot, but there was a shot as well. Not uncommon with that Southpaw Orthodox combination to see knockdowns slash slips or a combination of both and that is what we saw in round number seven however by referee Bryce Birdwistle it was ruled as a knockdown count was applied and the judges take note the left hand down the middle is really working for Caesar and Monson at the moment There it is again. As, yep. he, as he goes back, he's still in that line of the left hand. He's got to go back, pivot, bring his front foot around the front foot of a Monson and get out of danger. Where angles become just so crucial. Even defensively, you can make that work and the greats do. Ed Brian had the opportunity there with a the right hand over the top. Was right. slipped nicely by a Monson. Right. As we look at uh, the feet of both fighters, Solomon's working the right way. He's getting around to the left. But as he's rolling, he's not bringing his front foot around the front foot of Caesar and Monson. He's just going sideways with it. He needs to get in behind that front foot, which will bring him around the back of Caesar and Monson. If he just rolls around, well, Caesar will just follow him on that angle and catch him with the left down the middle. Okay, there on the outside that front foot and again easily yeah. was Egberine yeah, when, when he got on the outside he was able to dominate if you just roll with that foot is all the south way has to do is follow you around you need to get behind it as you could oh there you go again front foot outside and the left hook this is better from Egberine this is best action since round number three for mine and you can hear the urgency in the corner of what more do and Tommy McCurry Talon Solomon Egberine, he has to do something different. Oh, good short right hand from Egberine. And again from Solo. That's a massive step up, a massive change from uh, Sol. Just looks more fluent in the back half of this round. Former Nigerian, now based out of Marrickville, Central Sydney. Both guys firing almost simultaneously there. Good left hand and an equally good right hand from Egremont. Final couple of seconds of round number eight. Get off his head. Right. Step back. Box. Oh, left hand on the belt from the right side. Is that championship round? You need to give me more punches like you do. I told you he can't fight on the oh, back foot. Did you hear me? He can't fight on the back foot. You need to put him on the back foot. You need to jab, jab so your way in a big punch. Round number eight was a much better round for Solomon Egbrine. He starts getting that foot on the outside, doubled the right up like his corner of ass. There it is, the double. Three, three. I need combination. So, 
They can't look you out, okay? You're showing, you're showing them too much respect. You need to take the fight from Thank you, Chris. Second sounds round nine. Go blue. 12 knockouts to Caesar Amonsot in 22 wins, 11 knockouts to Solomon Ekbarim in 21 wins. So percentage-wise, very, very similar. Yeah, on paper, they're very equal, both fighters. There you can see uh, Ekbarim trying to get on the outside now as he digs a good right hook to the body. There's that lead up cut I spoke about in round one or round two from a mod site. Oh, nice left hand down the middle. All the heads Ooh. come together. There was a short shot in there from Ed Grime as well. Trying to come over the top with that lead hand was a mod site. Oh. oh, good right hand. That's hurt. That's hurt, Solomon Ed Grime. He's in trouble. Back against the ropes. What has Caesar got here? Looking for the finish. Ed Bryan pushes his way out of trouble. Yeah, he's still in trouble. He's going to go down here. Solomon Ed Bryan. Monsat. Coming from all different angles. Oh, and again, the left hand down the middle from Monsat. Very, very close. Nearly a head clash again. Amazes me how there hasn't been a big one and an opening. Round number nine, halfway through. He's done well to stay up. That was the combination that got Solomon Eggbrain at the start of this round. Oh, and again. Oh, left hand. Yeah. Front foot outside, straight down the pipe from the Mozart. I know we've mentioned it several times, but that front foot is key. Whoever's on the outside is is winning that portion of the fight. That's exactly right. You can see Sol's hands very low, dangerously low now. Big round for uh, Cesar Amonsot. Facing camera Amonsot. Egberheim back to camera at the moment. Good upper body movement from both guys there and avoiding the shots that were thrown. I'd like to see a Monsop bring that left hook in as he gets a lead hook in. See Sol's hands very low. I think the jab, the left hook may come straight through for Caesar and Monsop. Ten seconds remaining in round number nine. So at the end of this, nine minutes of action. Oh, another left hand. And eating one there was Egberon. Big That's round for nine. Caesar Amonso. Rankings as they stand, we did at the start of November. And Jack Assis is the champion. Rani Ganoy, Steve Wills, Josh King, also Todd Kipp from Queensland, New South Welshman Robert Whaley. Jack Assis, the veteran, closing in on 50 pro fights, is the man. They are trying to catch. Pump, pump the jab, head movement, that double left hand on the ropes. Listen, see that on the ropes, he can't go anywhere. There's pump that left to avoid, trust me, not this. Come on, let's go. Seconds as we approach round 10. Let's go, Blue. A little slow out of the corner here, a little slow off oh. the stool as Solomon Egberone. Those 33 years and some. 12 months out of the ring, catching up with him late in this fight. Oh, and there's the left hand. He's had some luck with that. I'm on side. On side, it's a very pronounced step with his right, getting on the outside of Egberheim's left foot. Changes angles by taking it to the inside, closing in quickly. Oh, big left hand. Took it well, Egberheim. He looks flashy, Egg Barime, in his flashy green shorts, but I'm not sure about the cut-off track he's underneath. 
It's an interesting look, isn't it? It's, and I don't think it's one I've seen before, but the, the cut-off yellow trackies underneath the boxing shorts. Might be good luck, Charm. Well, he's looking for that combination once again. It worked, didn't it, in round number nine, the straight left hand and the, the lead uppercut. Yeah, it didn't. It's one that, he, as I said earlier, he caught Mick Katsidis with it quite a lot. Nice body shot there from uh, Egg Brian. Hits come together. Well, Egg Brian's right. forehead and the jaw of a monson. Oh. oh, good left out, right hand from Egg Brian. It is still there to be won. It is. I think Sol's got to dig in. He's got yep. to find something extra because there's no oh. doubt he'll be behind on the school cards. Yep. Good left hand from Lamonzo. Swelling around the right eye of Solomon Egbarain. Top 50 world boxer. Right. It's been 12 rounds just the once. That was all the way back in 2002 with a 12 round victory over Eddie Delic for the Aussie welterweight title right down here in Melbourne. Of course, national titles now contested over the 10 rounds, state titles contested over eight rounds. It was implemented by Brad Fakali, who was here ringside tonight, going back a few years. Controversial at the time, but I think a, a logical stepping stone in uh, developing young boxers and their careers. Just as far as how, how long they're spending in the ring. Because of course from there you go up to 12 rounders for regional titles like we are contesting tonight. Egg Brian almost waiting to try and counter here. Yeah, as he does right then. A good combination from Egg Brian. Both guys physically look to be doing it pretty well. Yeah, certainly so. At this stage, uh, Cesar Monson more so, maybe. Let the hands go. We haven't let the hands flow yet. He's tired and he's letting his hands go. He's only going for the winner. Get the legs, how you feeling? Let's go out and be good. Come on. You're wasting your punches, brother. You're wasting your blood. Waste them. You hit that right hook. Left hand. Follow through. Hey, if you throw that one, this one. Both corners slow to leave as we move into the final six minutes. Some very wayward, almost slow motion shots from Egberheim there. Oh, good footwork from Egberheim there. Dropped the back foot a little, threw the right end in behind it, caught him on side. Son needs to come round to his left, and when he does come round to his left, it's a natural, natural right. angle. And a natural body oh. movement as well. Clear the way for that right hand to come down. straight down the pipe. Break. Stop. 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 Oh. Well, Filipino born and the biggest Filipino fighter of all time last week, Manny Pacquiao versus Juan Antonio Marquez in another contra controversial fight. What? I had Marquez winning. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. And I think most Australian boxing fans and boxing fans worldwide were... Uh, pretty much the same opinion. Yeah, Pacquiao, one of my favourite fighters to watch, but you've got to call it as you see it. And yeah. I thought Marquez should have got that one pretty comfortable in the end. He's just a boxer that Pacquiao can't quite figure out. And in any sport, and I guess any pursuit, there's always that one that stands in front of you. You can shine in front of others that may well be more talented, but here's the question mark for Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, I agree. Does this finally lead to... Manny, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather Jr. 
There are those of the opinion, including the commentators in the United States, that Manny just relaxed a little, slowed right down, trying to give Floyd a false sense of security. Massive gamble, a massive risk if you're doing that, but surely us boxing tragics around the world, the money's there, would deserve to see it. Oh, big shots from both boys back here in Melbourne. Right hook there from Melissa. Yeah, I think it's one that all boxing fans want to see. Uh, I think it's, gone, and I think it's gone, gone beyond. We want to see it. We have to see it. We're desperate to see it. Just a slip there from Amotso. A welcome addition to the Australian boxing ranks, Cesar yep. Amotso. Left-hander, we've got some great left-handers. A man, Blake Caparello, later on you'll see. Omar Sheikh, Michael Bolling. And Two Guns, Paul Fleming, you'll see him tomorrow night. Yeah, looking forward to seeing young Two Guns. One of Australia's finest young boxers and athletes. A very funny little human. He is. He's a little different, is Paul Fleming. Oh, big shots traded at the end of round number 11. One shot, wanted to touch him up and say well done. And Sol said, bugger you. You want this fight? How much you want the fight? Round number 11. Quite an even round from both fighters. Solomon Egberheim have some luck with the right hand down the middle. Let's hope there's more fireworks this round. The 12th and final round coming up. The Collingwood Footy Club is here. Nick Maxwell. Skipper. After some off-season surgery they are in the house well supported here at Flemington is Brian Armour through to Barry Michael live event supported by Australia's sports leader Fox Sports touch gloves touch gloves step back touch gloves touch gloves 12 and final it is Caesar Amonside in the black and the white Solomon Egberheim who was down Mid-fight in the green and white. Brings excellent power, Caesar and Monson off that right uppercut. Good left hand down the middle, counter from Solomon Egbrine. Keeping in mind that right uppercut's a lead uppercut for Caesar. Good body shot there from uh, Solomon Egbrime. He needs to get in all a little low, that one. <laughs> Referee separating back into centre ring with two minutes remaining. Desperate for Sol Egbrime, you would think. Good punches yeah. from Egbrime off the ropes. Back against the ropes. And he needs more of it. He needs to bring that home this round. Oh, nice left hand down the middle from Amotsot. Steps outside, sends it straight down the pipe. Tying up with 90 seconds or just right. under remaining. Egbrime yeah, bearing the forehead in. Egbrime yeah, again circling round to the right, throwing the left hand, slipping well, effectively. Time is running out for former Nigerian amateur superstar. Locked in a Muay Thai style clinch there, the two boys. So Monsot levels that left hand Egberheim again playing the countering role. Yeah, dug a few good ones to the body, then a, then a shot over the top as both boys land some solid punches. 30 seconds left in the 12th and final round. 
Back into it they go. 12 rounds and we haven't seen a cut in this style of fight. Oh, a nice uppercut from the Monson. Last flurry. Here we go. And it's going to finish in the corner. And almost going to finish in a clinch after 36 minutes of work. Caesar and Monson. Solomon Ekera. What a great deal. Love lost between the two combatants as they head back to their corners. And Among site, last fight September last year. And that was at Lightweight. Tonight he campaigns at Light Welterweight. The WBO Oriental Light Welterweight title. Not 100% sure what that means or how much that means, but he may well have won the fight against Solomon Ekberheim, which looks pretty good on your resume. The 12th and final round, we had action aplenty. There's that, that lead uppercut that Amonsot had a lot of luck throughout the 12 rounds. Still plenty more coming your way on this edition of Friday Night Fights. Victor Oganoff, Brad Pitt at Cruiserweight, the undefeated national champion Brad Pitt in action again. Then the vacant Australian light heavyweight title will be contested between Michael Van Nimwegen and also Blake Caparello, New South Wales versus Victoria. In our main event here tonight, part of the IBF middleweight box-off series, it is a title eliminator. Aramiselli Albert and the King certainly the King of Melbourne, Sam Solomon. And we'll explain the process of what happens with and to tonight's winner. The opportunity of the real deal, Daniel Gill. And a huge opportunity for Sam Solomon to make it an all Aussie affair for that IBF middleweight belt. That is our main event for this evening. At the moment, though, waiting for official word here as to what has happened between Caesar Amonsot and Solomon Ekbarai. Usually the longer they take, the tighter the, the decision is. Caesar in his corner looked quite confident. Of course, we lost during the week a man who fought here in 1975 down the road at St Kilda. I speak of smoking Joe Frazier and also closer to the home of late Mick Murray and Graham Brooks Sr. Two wonderful contributors to the sport of boxing here in the southern capital to the family and friends, our thoughts and prayers. Scorecards are in. So with that in mind, let's head center ring to Mr. Howard Lee. Make Thank it you, official. Andy. Okay, the both fighters come to center ring. How about a big round of applause there? For Caesar Amasad and Solomon Ake Brian. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a split decision. Judge Andrew Campbell had it 114-113 Egberheim. Andrew, or rather Anika Williams had it 114-113 Amasot. Final card, Dale Westerman. He had it 113-113 a draw. It's a split draw. A split draw here at the Pavilion. In our opener, between Caesar Amonsot and Solomon Egberheim. Not a point separating after 36 minutes. One fight down, three remaining. Back on Friday Night Fights after the break.
Okay. Welcome back to Australia's sports leader, Fox Sports. We are live from the pavilion in Flemington, Melbourne, Victoria. One fight down, three remaining. In our opener, a draw between Caesar Amonsot and Solomon Egberon. Our main event a little bit later on, part of the IBF box off series for an opportunity of a world title shot with the champion Australia's very own Daniel Giel. Joining me now, now based in the United States, a man that knows Daniel Giel well, Irmaselli Albert, what would it mean to fight Daniel Giel again for the world title? Um, uh, it's going to be a great uh, uh, fight, uh, you know, I learned uh, from the first fight, uh, fighting Daniel Gill again, I learned a lot uh, from that fight and I took a lot with me from that fight. So, you know, fighting me again is going to be more, much easier than the first fight. What do you have to do well tonight to beat Sam Solomon? Um, to beat Sam Solomon, I have to move, I have to be quick on my feet. Uh, I know he always like to come in, I like to come in too. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to keep most of that to myself. But we wish you all the very best tonight. Thank you. Aruma Celial, but one half of our main event here tonight. The other half is the King, Sam Solomon, who is one year the senior. As far as the tale of the tape goes, though, Solomon conceding nine centimetres in height, reaches almost identical, and the man they call the King is joining me now. And for us old blokes, it's a hell of an opportunity for you tonight, my friend. Old blokes, I know you get old from them, only 38. <laughs> the opportunity at an all Aussie world title challenge with Daniel Gill. Mouth watering. Mouth watering and a dream to, to come true. I've um, been training all my life for it, and uh, with my team, standoutgroup.com and da Daiquiri King, I can't go wrong. 12 months out of the ring. Is ring rust an issue tonight? Absolutely not, considering that I've done so many 12 round spas getting ready for each fight. I've peaked and detrained, detrained and peaked and now I've peaked and staying peaked. <laughs> what do you have to do tonight, having seen what Albert possesses, what do you have to do tonight and do well? Well he's got the reach on me, yep. um, but that's not going to be a factor because he, lo he loves to fight in close. So, I mean if I was in issues I'd be fighting from a distance and keeping my reach, but uh, he doesn't do that. But that's going to play in our hands because I like fighting in close, I like a war, and a war is what we're going to get. A war is what we're going to get, it's always a pleasure and good seeing you again. The King Sam Solomon, the other half of our main event tonight, chasing the IBF middleweight belt. Now, let's take a look at the names that have held this belt before, from Hagler to Tony to Jones Jr., Hopkins, Jermaine Taylor, Sebastian Sylvester, and guess who is ringside with us for the remainder of the night? The current champion, Daniel Gill. That's still got an awesome ring to it. Hey, it, it, it sounds good for sure, but uh, you know we're, we're looking for the future now and uh, we're looking for big things. We'll talk over the course of the next couple of hours about the opportunities and where you and Team Grange are headed. What are you expecting from our main event tonight? And I'm expecting a tough fight, and both both the guys love to throw punches. So man, there's going to be a lot of punches thrown. Uh, 
you know, it, it, it's going to be you know, a full on. I don't think there's going to be too many backwards steps. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, you took your first title defence back home, back to Tasmania against tonight's main eventer in Aramaselli Albert. You did so with a right hand that was no good for anything or anyone. But what did you find out about Aramaselli Albert on this occasion? Uh, we, we knew he's very tough, we knew he's very willing, we've seen a few of his fights beforehand and he, he's going to come forward no matter what, you hit him with a, you know, hit him with a brick and he's going to keep coming forward, so you know, that, that, that's what we knew he was about and uh, it's just a matter of you know, getting into a rhythm, practicing some of the stuff we've been doing in the gym. Now the good news, as we watch some of the highlights of uh, what was a, a great display once again, your first title defence, your right hand is now as good as new. Yeah, right hand's 100%. I, I give it a bit of time after that fight, and uh, it's yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm punching, you know, as hard as I was before, so I'm very happy with that. But uh, yeah, just just looking forward to getting into the next one. We're going to put you on the spot right now. Give us a tip. Give us your prediction for the main event tonight. Main event. I think I think Sam's going to get it. I think it's going to be on decision, unless there's a, a head clash, which uh, it could be on the cards. Big, big chance. The real deal. Daniel Gill, the IBF middleweight champion of the world, joining us in commentary for the remainder of the night. Time for fight number two coming your way on Friday night fights. It is a cruiserweight battle between the crush and rush and Victor Oganoff and Brad Hollywood Pitt, undefeated in 11 fights. You talk about contrasting styles, contrasting statures, you've got it right here. Five years separates the two, but height 13 centimetres, reach 15 centimetres, both in favour of Brad Pitt. Time to get the boys out, time to go to Howard Lee. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. 12 rounds of boxing. IBO Asia Pacific and OPBF Cruiserweight Championships. Two titles on the line. Would you welcome in the red corner from Russia, Victor Ogonov. Corner, Hollywood, Brad Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Centre Ring. You're in Melbourne, the Melbourne Pavilion. Brian Amateur to Barry Michael Sports. Welcome you to bout to another championship match on Fox Sports. Your IBO supervisor, Mr. Phil Austin from Brisbane, Queensland. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO Asia Pacific and OPBF Cruiserweight Championships. Two titles on the line. Would you welcome in the right corner on my left from Perth, Western Australia, by the Republic of Russia, with coach Sergi Evershin in the corner. Made his professional debut in 1998. Lost for an IBO championship in Washington, USA, September 2007. 35 professional fights, 31 wins, four losses, 29 inside the distance, including 26 consecutive knockouts early in his career. Tipping the scales at 90.55 kilograms, wearing scarlet red trunks with a touch of white piping. Would you welcome 
that Russian, Russian at 90.55 kilograms, Victor Ogana. And across the ring in the blue corner from Blair Gowrie, Victoria, morning to Peninsula via Blacktown, New South Wales, proudly sponsored by FTP. Gold medal Melbourne Commonwealth Games, Beijing Olympian, fighting out of Blacktown Hit Squad and training out of No Contest Gym, St Mary's, New South Wales. Lincoln Hudson, Fidel Turkle and Terry Pitt in the corner. The reigning Australian Cruiserweight Champion. A perfect record, 11 fights, 11 wins, 9 inside the distance. Wearing maroon with a touch of red and gold. Ladies and gentlemen, 89.05 kilograms. Would you welcome we named Brad Hollywood Pitt. <laughs> Referee Bryce Whitwhistle under the 10 point must system. Dale Westerman, Andrew Campbell and Nika Williams, they're judging this fight. Bryce Whitwhistle, ringside physician doctor, Peter Lewis. Here we okay, go, guys, 12 rounds of boxing. Listen to my commands, you have any questions? No questions? All right, protect yourselves at all time. This will be low, all right? This is this is good, just here, all right? Anything below this is low, anything below this is low, understand? Protect yourselves, listen to what I tell you guys. I don't want a wrestling match, all right? All right, touch him up now in the last round. Victor Oganoff, a controversial figure from the Contender Australia series, dating back two years against that man, one of the hottest properties in Aussie boxing, and soon to be one of the hottest properties, I think, in world boxing, in Brad Hollywood Pitt. Right. Oh, thank you. The IBO Asia Pacific Cruiserweight title is up for grabs. Has fond memories of this venue. Brad Pitt won the national title with a second round KO over Daniel Amman back in May. Yeah, you won't see many bigger knockouts than that one that night. It is 12 three minute round schedule. It's Ogden off in the red, Pitt in the maroon. Oh, oh, Pitt tagged there with a big left hand, make it two. Yeah, Pitt's got to be careful, he's, he carries that front hand very low. Ogunov's only chance is to do what he's doing now, as and Pitt digs him in. Here we go. Very smart oh, work from Victor Ogunov, try and unsettle Brad Pitt, he's the favourite. Oh, good oh, body to the body. Changing levels, Andy Raymond, Chris McCullen, and the IBF middleweight champion of the world. The real deal, Daniel Gill, ringside, calling the shots. Good right hook from Brad Pitt. He's a marked man, Gearley, Brad Pitt, isn't he? Yeah, he's taking a few already, but he's, uh, he's landing a few back. He's doing well. Yeah, he's settling in. Ogunov's just staying off him a little bit, and that's what he needs to be careful of. He can't walk in behind his shots, uh, behind it, nothing at all. Has there been a head clash here because Brad Pitt has bruised and battered just under the hairline, right in the middle of his forehead? Well, it started at 100 miles an hour, the start of round one. It's, it's really digging into There's no top. surprise here. Oganoff was going to come out head hunting. Oh. Oh. Opportunity there for the crush and rush in. Of course, Victor formerly, I guess most notably, competed around the super middleweight division, but naturally a much bigger guy than, than that limit would allow. Good jab. Yeah. Pitt has to use the jab. He's getting in close, burning a lot of energy early on. 15 yeah. centimetres in reach, Gilly. It's a monster reach. <laughs> He's got to use it. of Brad Pitt as well. We don't need to tell you how heavy Oganoff hands are. First 26 fights, won all by knockout. Yeah, everything's got power on at, at the moment for Brad Pitt, which is very dangerous. Oganoff's trying to walk him down, and that saps your energy ten times quicker than you are when you're boxing on the outside. Interesting story about Victor Oganoff at the weigh-in last night. 
weighed in at the 90.55 kilograms, and then went and trained. Went and trained immediately following the weigh-in. Wow. And both boys very fatigued early. You don't need to mix it with a bloke. I understand nerves. Pop the jab. Pop the jab. Hold the reins. Set the pace. You understand what I'm saying? Every time he comes off the jab, you know. Brad, every time he comes in with a jab, step back in two or three inches, that'll give you the range. If you just start swinging, you're not going to find your momentum. Every time he comes off this left hand, you understand me? Well, there was no filling out process like we saw in the last fight. It was action from the start. Hence why both boys are breathing quite heavy towards the end of the first round. That's what Pitt needs to do. Everything's got to come off that left jab. Second touch for round two. Lincoln Hudson, the principal in the corner there, along with Fidel Turkle and also Brad Barber Terry Box. assisting. As we move into round number two. I think at that pace of what we saw in round number one, we won't see 12 rounds get out of this. I think either way, I'm unsure if we'll see 12 rounds. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair chance. I think mean, Victor's, Victor's best bet is early on in the round. He's got to do his best work early. Yep. So if Brad becomes dominant early in the round, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be easy for, for Pitt. Yeah, great point, yeah. As we saw in the first round, Victor really unsettled Pitt, putting the aggression straight up. Oh, good jab from Pitt. 190 centimetre reach for Brad Pitt. 188 centimetres tall or six foot two in the old language. Is a big, big cruiserweight. Oh, what's happened here? Might have got a thumb Let's in go. the eye or thumb something. Thumb in the eye. Right. Let's go. Nah, it's head, bud. Let's go. Up. Up. Right. You want to go? Let's go. Oh. No? No. Time. Time. I'm, I'm not sure you can just call time. Victor Roganov has been caught in the eye here. I'm not sure if it was a, a thumb. I'll go. Wait, let's go. I'll go. But you can't just stop and go, I'm going to go over and wipe my eye. It's over. You let's get counted or the Box. fight's over. I thought the fight was over there and then. I'm not sure what that was about. He is head hunting, isn't he? Roganov, look at him in that crowd style. That the eye of Viktor Roganov has swollen up dramatically already. It's not his lead eye, so it's not going to affect his vision as much, but Daniel is such a front square on fighter, he's not going to have that peripheral vision of the left hook of, of Brad Pitt coming through. Yeah, that's right. He's got his head down low, so it's hard for him to see those, those wide swinging punches. Oh, good left hook there from Viktor Roganov. Found the left hand on a couple of occasions here. Brad Pitt finding it next to impossible to find cruiserweight matchups in Australia. The eyes nearly closed of Vic Roganoff. After that fight with Daniel Aman, you can understand why he struggles, yep. uh, you know, finding fights. One thing I like about Brad Pitt, as does, you know. Hey, turn around. Let's go. He's having real problems with that right eye. With some of the top amateurs, they're used to fighting, you know, the top guys. You have to fight the best in the world if you want to go anywhere. Brad Pitt took on Daniel Amman. Now Victor Ogunov, he's prepared to step up. I like it. He has stepped up very early in his career. This is just his 12th fight. And looking to keep that 100% record going with 12 wins. Nine knockouts out of 11 victories. This, this is going to teach him a lot as well, this fight. There's such a, a busy work rate early on. He's, uh, yeah, he's going to have to learn to control himself. Yeah, you're right. He needs to get control that tempo. Yeah. Or oh, Oganoff wins after that body shot from Pitt. And the Russian Russian is struggling because...
Way in, it's very hard to see. Looks all right there. Or maybe just caught the edge of that, that left hand thumb. Or oh, may have just caught the right hand thumb of Brad Pitt. Seconds out as we approach round three. Very hard to see, but there's a certain problem. And the eye is shut. And it's, it's, a, it's always visually very easy to tell if it's a punch or you've actually got a thumb in the eye. Like the swelling is different at Gilly. And there's no doubting that, that he's popped a thumb. Yeah, yeah, 100%. One thing I remember in the amateurs getting a, a thumb in my eye, I couldn't see where the distance of my opponent was. I had no idea, and thank, thankfully the opponent didn't know what was going on, but I had no idea where he was, whether he was right in front of me or a metre away. It's yeah. so hard to see, your vision just disappears. Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a lot blurry, a lot more blurry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. Oganov's showing great heart here to keep going on. He obviously is having vision problems, and Pitt's at his best. Great test for Brad Pitt. And after some nervous moments early, oh. starting to assert his authority here. Look at the power on that right hook from Brad Pitt. But his mouth's wide open, so he's, he's a little bit tired himself. Oh, long enough. There's a little taste of the power if you get complacent. Oh, and again the left hook from Oganoff. Both boys have got very good whiskers. Oh, and a right hand from Oganoff. He's Pitt in trouble. The undefeated Brad Pitt has been whacked a couple of times here. Oganoff is confident. Oh. Pitt is down. Is and he is hurt. Pitt is hurt wow. bad. Oh, his legs are gone. Time, time. Time. Mouth guard is out. Let's go. We're going to clean the guard. Get on with it. Stop the fuck up over the head, I'll stop you, I tell you. No, you know the rules. Alright, let's go. Let's go. Good. Let's go. Brad Pitt is on Wobbly Leg oh. Street. Swing over the back of the head. He's right. not in like this. good Listen shape at all, Brad Pitt. Back of the head, alright? Well, you've got a good 30 second break there, Brad Pitt. Gets out of the way of that left hook of Oganoff. We have got a war. Both guys firing the big ones. Hit down once already in the round. Now in defensive mode. Needs to hold on here. Yeah, oh, the body shot has hurt Brad Pitt. Oganoff, head hunting. Pitt against the ropes again. Pitt needs to grab hold of him. He's got to forget trying to punch him. Grab him, lock up the arms of Viktor Oganov. Tackle him to the ground if he needs. He needs to buy himself some time. Left Ooh. hand from Brad Pitt. Oganov is now in trouble. What Oganoff. about this for a contender for round of the year? He's in real strife, Viktor Oganov. As Pitt's mouth guard comes out again. Mouth guard of Brad Pitt is out. Oh, I think that's going to save both fighters. The corner's up on the stage. The corner can't come up. Both corners are up. <laughs> We're going to see the end of the round. Oh, the jab from Brad Pitt. Oganoff's still in trouble as he calls Brad Pitt on. And Oganoff has moved in almost into a southpaw position here. Oh, the back of the head again from uh, Victor Oganoff. make their way back to their corners. Let's go to the blue corner with Lincoln Hudson. Dr. Peter Lewis is over there. That's not my fault. He's putting his head down. That's it. 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 That's as we try and piece together what went on in round number three. Oh, the left hook it was from Victor Oganoff. That was the, the crucial knockdown, but not too sure of what landed. I think it was the left hand that knocked the equilibrium of Brad Pitt. 
and it was a gentle assist getting him to the ground. But it was the, the initial shot that did the damage, Gil. Yeah, it was more of a shoulder that pushed him to the ground. The, the first one did the damage. Round number four. Well, Brad Pitt really being tested here. Almost a Muay Thai clinch here from Pitt as he tries to clear the head. Oh. Get some stability in the legs. The back of the head again. One point. One point. One point. All right. Back of the head. Last time, understand? Good. One point One taken One off time. Victor Oganoff. Once again, One Victor's time. corner up on the ropes. Oh, and someone needs to tell him the rules. Right. He can't just jump up and, and get in the ring. Hey! Up! Hey! Get over there. All sorts happening here. You got five minutes, Brad. Right. Trainer's been told to Come move. On. Come to fight away. Yeah, you got five minutes. Oganoff back into the neutral right. corner. Right. Five minutes. Lincoln right, Hudson man. yelling abuse. Right. Go speak to your corner, yeah. Yeah, you get the five minutes. And we are going to have a five minute break here. Perfectly within the rules after a foul. Wow. Let's all take a couple of deep breaths. The eye of Victor Oganoff fully closed. The heart of this guy to fight on. Not only fight on, put Brad Pitt on the canvas. First professional to ever do so. You Great. take your time. We have five We spoke minutes. earlier about the cruiserweight rankings. Lead Brad Pitt is the national champion. Jack. Let's take a look at how they stack up. Adam Forsyth is at number one, also undefeated with 10 fights, 10 wins. Anthony McCracken, Dominic Vey, Daniel Amman, the former champion, Peter Cronier, and number six is Victor Oganoff. And that is who is in the ring with Brad Pitt tonight. And it was a knockout from Brad Pitt at this very venue in May of this year over Daniel Amman, that I think has got a few of the cruiserweights in the country a little tentative to step into the ring because this is as good a right hand as you will see. You won't see a better right hook in this business. Oh. Yeah, okay, but you've been told. I don't want to talk about it, mate. Wait. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah, all these points, man. Beautiful, beautiful. That's experience from the corner of Lincoln Hudson over there trying to buy his time. But will this work in the favour of Victor Oganoff, who was also a little edgy in uh, round number four? Three. Okay, why the point off? Let's take a look on replay. Yep. Yeah, uh, he had been warned for it. And it's, okay, in your mind, Danny Gill, is that a blatant foul? One point off? Yeah, 100%. That, that's uh, looking, for, looking for a bit of a rest. Uh, he, he's looking to put the other guy off, and uh, he certainly did that. Well... We've relaxed, the heart rate's gone down, we hope your has too. But has the heart rate of Victor Organoff and Brad Pitt gone down as they touch him up and get ready to go back to war? It's like they've thrown Brad Pitt in the swimming pool, they've just soaked him up in water. Well Brad was still a little unsteady on his legs, so utilising the time as best you could advantageous for the blue corner. The water in the blue corner, they need to mop that up. Someone's going to get hurt. Oh, look at Pitt cracking away, clubbing away. Minute 40 remaining in the round. After all that confusion, we think so anyway. Oh, good uppercut from Brad Pitt. Brad looks to have his legs back. Seems to be some clarity. I think that five minute break, or whether we saw the full five minutes, but it would have helped both fighters. They really needed a Undeniably. It has been a cracking pace. The danger of Pitt is those hands are very low. He's got super fast hair, uh, hands, Brad Pitt. He's got great power, but his hands are very low, which is going to play into Organoff's hands. 
Yeah, he's definitely open for those big overhand hooks. Oh. Hogan up, walked into a couple there. Look at that from Hollywood. Oh, that's the shot, the body shot. Yeah. He's originally a Victorian boy, but now based in Sydney, Brad Pitt. Plenty of hometown support when he comes back to the pavilion to fight. They are ever so proud of him. The, ninth, the 2006 Commonwealth Games heavyweight division gold medalist, a 2008 Olympian, undefeated as a pro, but in the biggest battle of his pro life at the moment. Yeah. An achievement also done by the man in the middle of us tonight, Andy, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, yep. Daniel Gill. Manchester was yours, Manchester? That's right, 2002, yeah. What a long round, round four! It was a long round, round four, but certainly well worth the wait. Round number four, a round full of fireworks. Both guys having success with shots, but it was Victor Oganoff losing the point for the punch in the back of the head. I think uh, I think Pitt realised combination punching, throwing more punches is going to work for him. That's right, that's what he needs to do. Definitely, from the Michael Bowling fight uh, a little while back, I mean, that, that's what broke yep. Victor Oganoff down, and uh, that was more punches, more punches definitely were. Yeah, and I think with, with uh, Michael Bowling on that night, he kept moving around the outside, he never stayed in front at the moment, Brad Pitt's going straight back, yep. and allowing Victor Oganoff to get his power shots off. Yep, that's right. Oh, he tagged it in then Oganoff! Big blows from big men. I'd like to see Pitt dig, it, dig that left rip to the body again. It is one of his better shots and it looked like it hurt uh, Victor Oganoff in round number four. Yeah, on more than one occasion as well. What a fight. I did not see this coming. I thought Pitt would dominate from start to finish. But credit to Victor Oganoff. He's showing he's still got some fight left in him. At 35, there's plenty left on the... Russian, Russian, the destroyer. The red trunks. Absorbing all that punishment as well. He's doing, doing a great job to be able to come back. Yeah, he's sir. getting hit with some big shots from Pitt. That's where I'd like to see Pitt go back to the body. Oh. He's obviously hit uh, the Russian, Russian with everything. And he keeps coming forward. He knows no different Victor Oganov. Originally from Russia, now based in Perth, Western Australia. He's showing a chin of granite. It's Victor Roganoff, there's the body shot. Back to the top of the left shoulder from Pitt the game. Two points combination, doubling it up, and Roganoff standing there. Look at the power on Brad Pitt. And if Victor Oganoff uses his feet, only that small little bit like he just did there, he'll make Brad Pitt miss all day because Pitt's really loading up the shots, which means your feet plant to the ground. I know Oganoff is taking most of these on the forearms and the gloves, but how many more can he take on the forearms and gloves? Oh, at this pace, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think he's going to be able to take too much more. A minute remaining, round five. There's that movement again. Yeah, that's right. In that movement. And it's only a half a step. It's a real small movement. Oh, as Oganoff gets the left hook through. He took one to give one. Gilly, we saw in the amateurs a lot of Brad Pitt and Adam Forsyth. Some yep. cracking fights between those guys. One day, hopefully, we'll see him here in the pro ranks. It would be a great fight. They're both great fighters. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to see that one. Oh, oh. Hit from a defensive position into the corner here. Offensively superb. You can see the even fatigue bringing it, coming in on Brad Pitt, and he's the one doing all the punching. Look at that eye of Victor Oganoff. Wow. Oh, Victor's just taking a knee. I think he's really had enough. His body shots and yeah. some damage. Five, six, seven. Hey, you ready? Let's go. Come on, hey. Hey. No. It's over. Victor Oganoff has had enough. Brad Pitt victorious. He is still missing.
Mr. 100%. Well, that really tested him. Fucking ready for that hit. Round number six. The referee stops the contest. Brad Pitts to retires. Wow. Brad Pitt Pitts corner for Del Turk who comes over and actually helps out Victor Oganoff in the in the opposite corner. How tough are these two lads? It was all power shots here in the last round from Brad Pitt. Oganoff. Kept coming, kept coming. That was about his only success in that round, the left hook, but the rest was Brad Pitt. And I think, like you said, Daniel Gill, those left, those body shots, that was a telling factor. Here we go there. This was enough for Victor Oganoff. Yep. What a victory for Brad Pitt. What a performance from Vic Oganoff. Massive weekend for you Oz Boxing fans on Australian sports leader Fox Sports as we are finishing our calendar year with a double header tomorrow night live with a bell time of 8pm on Fox 3 and 3HD the first title defence for the IBF featherweight champion of the world. What a ring to that. The kid Billy Dib against undefeated Italian Alberto Cervini. We hope you can join us tomorrow night right here on Fox Sports. What a year it's been and the best of Aussie boxing. We've tried our best to narrow it down to just three hours and it premieres Saturday the 24th of December. Chrissy Eve on Fox 2 and 2 HD. Some of the best fights, knockouts and rounds you will see not only in Australia but anywhere around the world. Time to go centre ring and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, the time. Referee Bryce Bissubert Whistle got the OK from Moganoff to stop the contest. The time, 2 minutes 56 seconds, 2.56 round 5. Taking his perfect record at 12, 12 with 10 inside the distance. Brad Hollywood Pitt. He's the new IBO Asia Pacific and OPBF Cruiserweight Champion. Brad what a Pitt, fight. Victor Oganoff together centering after waging war. What a fight, and we are only halfway there. After the break, the vacant Australian light heavyweight title is on the line. It's Michael Van Nimwegen and Blake Caparello.
Fox Sports. It is for the vacant Australian light heavyweight title. Michael Van Nimwegen from Sydney, New South Wales, and Blake Caparello from Melbourne, Victoria. Both relatively inexperienced young men looking to hold the big belt in the Aussie under 80 kilo division. Both at 25 years of age. A slight height and slight reach in favour of the Essendon boy Caparello. Nothing separated on the scales. The vacant Aussie light heavyweight title coming your way on Fox Sports. Let's go to Howard. Ladies and gentlemen, the 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant Australian Light Heavyweight Championship. Would you welcome in the red corner from Cronulla, New South Wales via Paddington, Michael the Ruckus Van Nim. Would you welcome in the blue corner, Victoria's own bomber, Blake Caparello. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant Australian Light Heavyweight Championship. Would you welcome in the red corner, wearing black trunks with a touch of red, from Cronulla, New South Wales, via Paddington, coach David Birchall, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, gymnasium Lakemba. He is the reigning New South Wales super middleweight champion. A professional record of six fights, five wins, one draw, two inside the distance. Ranked number eight by Ray Whitley's World of Boxing as the contender. At 25 years of age, 79.25 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome for the first time to Melbourne, the ruckus, Michael Van Nim Wiegand. And across the ring in the blue corner from Essendon via Greenvale, Victoria, coach Sam Labruna. He's been a star on Brian Amatruda, Barry Michael shows for the past 12 months. Unbeaten in professional boxing. Ten bouts, nine wins, one draw, four inside the distance. Rated as the number one contender at 79.15 kilograms, trunks of gold with a touch of black, white sand, gold as I said. Would you welcome bomber Blake Caparello? Ten rounds of boxing. Your referee, Ignatius Misselatus. Judges, Anika Williams, Andrew Campbell, Dale Westerman. Here we go. Let's get it on. Championship time continues. Okay, boys. I spoke in the change rooms. Expect to obey my commands all the time and protect yourselves all the time. Understand? Touch guys now and good luck. Vacant Aussie line heavyweight title coming your way. That man, Michael Van Nimwegen, has travelled south. The hostile territory to take on local favourite. And Essendon boy, the bomber Blake Caparello. <laughs> Ten rounds is the journey. 79.38 kilos, 175 pounds or 12 stone seven. For the vacant Aussie title. It is Van Nimwegen in the solid black trunks, in the black and the gold. Caparello, once again, a right-hander versus a left-hander. The right is Van Nimwegen, the left is Caparello. Both boys very deserving of an Australian title fight. I know it's something Blake Caparello's tried to get for a long time. 
and uh, yeah, both uh, big light heavyweights as well. Cabarell, as a guy, has impressed me for a long time as well. Yep. He's uh, he puts it very, very well together in the ring. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I love what Blake Cabarell brings. He, you know, he, he fears nobody. Like I said in the intro, he'll just take on anybody, and that's what I love about him. Joel Casey, Kane McKay, Michael Bolling, Togla Tower, Joseph Quajo, Aaron Ross. Fair list of names yeah. in your opening 10 fights. And we're talking a guy who had a very limited amateur career. It yeah. wasn't as if he had 60 or 70 amateur fights under his belt. Oh, that's the punch that got Michael Bolling. That is the big shot of Blake Caparello, and it is a boomer, that left hand. That's what Michael Van Nemwegen really has to be careful of. A lot of time for young Michael, inside and outside of the ring. Nice young guy. I was, I was actually a little bit worried going into tonight because he does hold his hands very low, yep. Michael Van Nemwegen, but tonight he's got him up very high. It uh, looks like he's boxing a lot better. Yeah, we've seen him a couple of times now on Fox Sports with uh, Joel Burke and Biggie, Big George Zeros. Always yep. in a great fight, great fight, uh, Mike Van Dam Weegen. Lost an eight-rounder, unanimous decision to Georgie Zeros for the New South Wales Super Middleweight title. Oh, the left hook from uh, Caparello. Said about Blake in the opener, whoever and whatever you put in front of him, he is steamrolling. Oh, a little bit more knuckle needed on that one. Yep. This is the danger of Blake Caparello. If you sit there, like Mike's doing at the moment, he's going he's gonna to tee off on you. Mike has to throw punches as he's going. He can't sit at Blake's distance. Yeah, Blake, Blake's just getting more and more confidence too. That's right, and that's how Blake works. Once you let Blake Caparello get a rhythm, he's very hard to stop. Mike needs to make it rough, and he needs to get in behind his punches and, and try and unsettle Blake Caparello. Sitting here, that's danger. Good jab there from Van Den Yeah, pushing forward ever so slightly. Ripping to the body. He's got an effective level change. As Blake Caparello, one round down, nine potentially remaining. And we saw, of course, uh, last up, Michael Van Nimwegen with a six-round unanimous points decision over Joel Burke in a Sydney show in July this year on the undercard to Nader Hand and Dan Pawsey. And he got sucked into Joel Burke's fight until about rounds five or six where he switched back onto his style. Yep, busted, real... busted his hand. Yeah, he did, broke his hand. And Gilly, you know, of all people having been what you've been through in the last three months, yeah. It's, it's a difficult road back from a, from a dud hand. Yeah, it's not, it's not too good, but you, you just got to you know, look after it enough and, uh, and hopefully it'll come right. They turned it on, didn't they, the boys? Rarely does the professor not turn it on. Before the bell even started, that had warnings. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the heads come together and the referee had to break them before a fight even started. Got your mouth guard in. Watch that corner, boys. Round number two, the vacant Australian light heavyweight title. Andy Raymond, Chris McCullen, the little big man, and the, the real deal Daniel Gill. A world champion, an Aussie champion, and, well, a Andy a, Raymond. A, a potential contender for second place in my own house. Well, you were a BMX <laughs> bike champion. That'll do. <laughs> Take that from 25 odd years ago. <laughs> oh, there's that left hook from Caparello. It's such, it's so easy for us to sit here and say, but Mike needs to put his punches together. Put them in bunches. Ones ain't going to work against Blake Caparello. No, they're exactly right. There's the one. There's the, the low percentage single punch. There doesn't seem to be a lot of height difference between these guys. Not a lot of reach difference as well, no. but Caparello just lands that left very, very easily. At two centimetre height, three centimetre reach advantage, both in favour of Blake Caparello, but again, the way he stands, offensively and defensively, legs apart, really crouched down, it appears, albeit an optical illusion, that Van Nimwegen's got that length and height on him. I think what works in Blake's, uh, Blake's favour is he uses his feet really well for a lefty. He's one of the better left-handed fighters around at the moment here in Australia. 
He's in and he's out of range with only a small step, a half a step. He's never too far away from his opponent, as you saw there. Sometimes fighters jump too far away and they're, they're a meter out instead of being only a few centimeters where they can still land their shots. Caparello's always there. Yeah, that's exactly right. Sometimes, sometimes they get too close as well and crowd their punches. That's right, yep. But, it, but he, he tends to hold his distance well. Oh, just missed that slip left hand. I think, you know, Mike's got to, got to give Blake something to look at. Again, easy set than done from here for us. But, you know, even if it's just a jab, poking it out, whether it scores, hit the front glove, hit the shoulder, but give Blake Caparello something to look at, not just standing at distance. Good head movement there from uh, Mike Van Den Weijen. I think the thing as well that, that Mike's got to be careful of is that he doesn't get frustrated. We've seen him, he loves to be, he loves to be in an action fight, he loves to put yep. pressure on. But at the moment he's struggling with the style of uh, Blake Caprella. He's just got to, you know, stick to his game plan, trust in his corner of Dave Birchall, that, you know, they'll, they'll reassure him what he's got to do in the break. Could it could even be an idea to try and, yeah, get into Blake Caprella's head. Some, sometimes that's a good tactic. I, I try and do that myself. R rough them up. Get in their head and yep. uh, play a few games, and uh, sometimes it puts them off. Talk a bit of jive. Yeah. That's round two. Two rounds down. Back to the corners they go. In our semi-main event on this edition of Fox Sports Friday Night Fights. <laughs> Round number three coming your way. Van Nimwegen, we spoke briefly about Caparello's amateur career, a brief one. Under 10 fights, Van Nimwegen, 26 fights, two-time state champion and a bronze medal at the Aussie titles. So despite the fact he's only had 29 rounds and six fights as a professional, he's got some experience there. Yeah, I saw Mike down in Canberra the year that he represented New South Wales at the Australian titles. And he didn't lose that fight by too much. He was always in it to fellow New South Wales, Welshman, I think. Luke Wonder, maybe. But, you know, he was around that level. So he has got the better amateur career. But at this stage, you can see uh, Blake Caparello is controlling this fight today. Two young men, genuinely good oh. hand-eye coordination as Van Nimwegen scores and scores well with the right hand. Yeah, it was his best punch so far yep. of the fight. You saw uh, Sam Labruna in the corner. He was the one on the outside doing the talking to Blake Caparello. They got a great relationship, fighter-trainer relationship. It's very important in boxing, I think, that the trainer and the fighter think the same, they get along, and the, the trainer can keep the fighter calm in the corner. Which, Gila, you have excellent down in your team. Yeah, we, we had a great corner, and the, the, a minute is not very long. You don't have you very, very long to recover, so you got to make the most of that minute. Yeah, that's right, yeah. This is better from Mike Van Nam, you know, he gets touched a little bit there, but nothing major. Good jab there from Caparello. Something that, you know, the lefties don't use or the righties don't use against the lefties too much is the jab, and I think I always talk about it, Rob Medley, uh, down at Penrith one night, it was against um, Gary, Comey. Gary Comey, you're right, dominated the fight with the left hand. A real good performance by Rob Medley that night. What's that? And he beat up his friend. It was that his one? friend, yeah, that's the one. You're a weird lot, all uh -huh. of you. The Grange, eh? Yeah, it, was, it was a topic of conversation for, uh, for a, little, uh, a little time after that as well, that, that fight. Back to the present time. 
Just under 40 seconds remaining in round number three. And still yet to see fluent combination punches from, from Michael. Oh, oh, there's that danger. He's walked into one there, hasn't he? Hasn't he got a good left hook, Blake Caparello, as he finds the room with the uppercut as well. We saw the referee say to my fan named Weijin, that's the third time you fought. There's, there's an impossibility. You're going to step on the front foot of the lefty. That's just the way the left-handed, right-handed work. Oh, that left hook is unbelievable from Blake Caparello. That's Back to the corners we go. Last time we saw Blake Caparello, it was a 12-round points victory for an interim regional title. August this year over Joseph Quajo, who previously had a stoppage victory over Mr. Business, Jamie Pittman. I think on this night was whether Blake was trying something new or whatnot, but he stood in front of Joseph Quajo a lot. Whether he's gone home and he's learned, go back to what he does best, and that's his movement around the outside, try and catch his opponent out. You can see here he was right in front of um, Quajo, which, you know, probably wasn't the best thing to do, although he won comfortably in the end. Seconds out, round four. Real learning experience it was for Blake Caparello. Went the 12 rounds. I think it's only been the 10 rounds plus twice. Once was against Quajo, the other one was December of last year. That draw for the national title with Shane McConville. Yeah, in saying that, we say only twice in such a short professional yep. career. Most guys don't touch a 10 round fight until they're into their 10th, 11th pro fight. Yep. He did it in his in his fourth, I think, from memory, around around, around about soon. Oh, good jab there from Caparello. Oh, and the left hand followed. This guy's a real star of the future, Blake Caparello. Oh, good work from Van Nemwegen. Michael Van Nemwegen in the black trunks, in the black and gold is Blake Caparello. Watch it. Put up. Won the Victorian title in just his third fight. Defended it twice, a victory over Joel Casey and also Kay McKay. Casey was rated WBA 10 before losing that Pabalion heavyweight title just last week as well. Okay, let's put you on the spot, Geely. So, you know, we see Blake Caparello in control of this fight. We go back to the corner in, in uh, my fan then, Weege, and what do you tell him as a trainer? If you come back to corner to me, I, I think something needs to change. Michael Van Nemwegen is, is following, following Blake Avrilla around. He's chasing after him. I think try and reverse the roles. Make him come to you. Yeah, see, like if, see if that works. Yes. Get him to come to you and he won't be able to counter punch as, as easily. He, he'll probably try and bring the attack. Then maybe you can counter punch him. Yeah, great point. And, and the old saying, the best way to beat a counter puncher is beat him at his own game. Exactly. If he's going to go forward like this, he's got to put more than one together. He's got to put them in punches. Threes, fours. Yep. Yep. The single punch is going to get counter punched every day of the week. That's right, yep. What's foot? All the time. You watch that foot. It's, it's impossible. I'm not sure what the referee wants him to do. Caparello. They had a nice Very move. good eye. I like what Van Nemwegen did then. He stepped around the front foot, put a pivot on, but didn't punch off it. Good jab from Van Nemwegen. Do you try something without the punch at the end? Do you try the body movement and say, okay, well, that worked. Next time I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but then throw one at the yeah, end of it. Shoot a double jab right hand straight off it. Open up that line and send it down the middle. Middle stages of round number four. In fact, the majority of round number four has been like this with Caparello just circling, predominantly left. Oh, okay. there it is again, a little bit of a balk, a little faint, then he jumps on it. That was good work from Van Nemwegen. Like you said, Gilly, doing something different, whether it's forward, back.
middle rounds here in the battle for the vacant Australian light heavyweight title once again uh, weight limit of 79.38 kilos 175 pound or 12 stone 7 you could see in the corner Dave Birchall asking Mike you know do this do that Mike's got frustration on his face he wants to do it but it's impossible and it's credit to Blake Caprello we saw the same look and uh, in in Michael Bolling yep same thing, very frustrating to, uh, to fight Blake Caprello, and that's a credit to his style because he fights a great southpaw fight. He is, he actually came, came down to the Grange Gym, uh, it was a while back now, and I don't know if you were out sparring with, with Blake, and uh, he is, he, he's, a, he's a great southpaw to box against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wish him all the best. Yeah. There was a look of resignation on the face of Michael Bolling when they fought, very much like Michael Van Nimwegen knew exactly what he wanted to do, knew exactly what he had to do, but actually doing it and achieving it, very different and very difficult. Yeah, that's right. And credit to Blake and his team. That's better from Van Den Weijen backing up, bringing Caparello forward. Yeah. He certainly doesn't look as comfortable as he does when he's going back, Blake Caparello. Trying to come over the top there, Van Den Weijen. Gets out of the way of a punch very well, Caparello. Oh, look at that. Walked into one. Took it well, did Mike Van Den Weijen, as he digs a right uppercut underneath. That was a real good shot. He saw that well, the left hand from Caparello, and got underneath it, did Van Den Weijen. Once again. Seems to be a bit of confidence time to pick up now. Yeah, you're right. What you said, he's trying now to counter uh, Caparello, and it seems to be working so yeah. far. This has been his best part of the fight so far, and we're in uh, round number five. Not following as much. A little uppercut there from Van Nemwegen, but not following. Has he got a bit of a nick on his left eye, Van Nemwegen? We'll see as he works his way around to this side of the ring. Final 30 seconds of round number five. Always, always very risky throwing big body punches and dropping your hands straight after on the rows. As we saw in the last fight. Yeah. <laughs> I think we saw a little bit of everything in the last <laughs> fight, didn't we? We did. Rules were well gone out the window. That was a beaut. Bell sounds half fight distance here. The Australian light heavyweight title. Here's what round number five produced. The left hand down the middle from uh, Blake Caparello. Oh, once again. Took him well, though. Yeah, he did take him well, Van Den Weijen. Stand down, stand down. Great. Not a lot of work for our referee Ignatius Missalides to do in the opening 15 minutes. Will that change in the second 15? All the work has been done by the athletes and the three ringside judges in Dale Westerman, Andrew Campbell and Anika Williams. Yeah, both very clean fighters, fought in great spirit. Is it Caparello, five rounds to nil? Um, yeah, probably still at this stage. Last round was, was pretty close. Would have been harder to score for the judges. Yeah, he might have, might have called it even, maybe. Yeah, last one. I certainly thought it was the best uh, round from Mike Van Dam region. So to win on points, Van Nimwegen potentially needs to win every round from here and then do something special. Yeah, and uh, 
Good left hand, uh, right hand to the body from Mike. But you're right, Andy. I think, you know, he needs to do something different and he certainly needs to win some rounds. Both guys still look fresh. Their eyes have not deviated. Good work from Van Dam Weijen. Make it rough, make it untidy. What he did with Joel Burke, that's what he needs to bring here tonight. If he's got to, if he's got to make it rough and untidy and forget what the fans want, he's got to do what's good for him in there and he needs to do something different. Try and unsettle Blake Caparello. Oh, dangerous. Both boys got them, they didn't fire them. Halfway through round number six. And then Weijin again back into that very similar format that we saw earlier. Tags Caparello around the ring, follows him, shadows him if you like. And it's allowing Blake to counter punch. Undeniably one of his streets. Ooh. See there, uh, Van and Weijin just missed with the right uppercut but then come two steps out, which was way too far away from Blake Caparello. He couldn't capitalise on that. And too many single punches as well. There needs to be a few more combinations if uh, Van, Van Dam Legion wants to start picking it up. Yeah, I agree. Look at that left hand straight down the pipe. Nothing on it, but just beautifully timed. Opportunity there for Van Nimwegen. 23 seconds remaining in the round. We've discussed a variety of theories in how Michael can turn this around. Is one still an option? Get him on the ropes and just start wailing him away? That's his only option as well. Well, not his only. He's got the counter, but I think that's one thing that he has to do if he can't work him backwards. He's got to get inside and rough it up. Round six. Let's take a look at the Australian Light Heavyweight Rankings as they stood at the start of the month. And of course, this title is vacant. That's what's being fought for tonight. Blake Caparello is the number one man. Joel Casey, who fought only recently with Manny Blamas. Mark Flanagan, new state champion. Daniel Bath there. Tyrone Jones as well. And the number seven on the list was man in the red corner tonight, Michael Van Nimwegen. You're at his guy, that's what he wants. Round number seven, what can the New South Welshman do here to turn the tables? Uh, we, we've actually got a, a good young... Uh, young fighter coming up as well, a guy by the name of Steve Lovett, fighting yes. out of the Grange that uh, yeah, next year or so will be making a big mark on the Australian scene. Very good young boxer, a good young athlete too. Just yes. a natural. One of the best left hooks in the game is Steve Lovett. Saw a lot of him in the amateurs and, and looking forward to seeing what he brings to the pro ranks. Range ever progressing and progressing with their new IBF middleweight champion of the world who is joining us tonight, Daniel Gill. He fought the junkyard dog Aaron Russell twice in the amateurs to Steve Lover for one apiece. Oh, nice left hand down the pipe. And again, look at that for timing. Two beautiful straight shots there from Blakey Caparello. We'll make that three. He's masking the frustration, but I'm quite sure it is there for Michael Van Nimwegen. Certainly. Oh, better work from Van Nimwegen. Then he come out. Then he's got to get on top. Instead of coming out, he's got to get on top of Blake. Yeah, that's right. He needs to test him out. Get in there and do some work. Don't just stand back. Stepped on his foot again. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with the the warnings on the run. I don't think it's changed the fight in any way, shape or form. You're doing it too often, okay? okay. That's impossible. Yeah, no, not too many I don't right? agree with that. Box? No. Oh. 
I sparred South Force non-stop and, and it happens time and without every spar that happens. Oh, the big left hook from Caprello falls short and this is where Van Der Muijen needs to be. And back to where we started, minute remaining in the seventh, good two punch combination from Caparello. rare young talent. When he throws that awkward left hand you can hear it echo, can't yeah. you? We around saw, the auditorium. We saw that put bowling down, but then I think it was... Uh, oh, oh, look yeah. at that left uppercut. Oh, wobbled the legs of Cal. Bottom. Van Den Weijen. Van Den Weijen is struggling oh, here. He's just under 30 seconds remaining in the round. Great Caparello has dominated on points, and he wants to finish this fight before the final bell. Well, this is real danger. He's on wobbly leg streak. Van Nimwegen. He's got to hold him. He could get hurt. Hands up, Mike. Oh, that, that's it. What decision has been made? Blake Caparello is the new Australian light heavyweight champion. Michael Van Nimwegen, filthy. But on replay, you'll find out that the right decision was made late in the fight, late in round number seven. What a moment for this young man, Blake Caparello. And will we see the rematch of Shane McConville and Blake Caparello? Yeah, we may well. We may well. Something a lot of people want to see. Shane, Shane's been out of the sport for some time with illness. We'd love to see him back. We'd love to see these two go at it again. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. I think Michael had been struggling for probably the last 30 seconds. Yeah. And... and We've seen uh, the, the finishing uh, style of Blake yeah. Caparello and, and it's dangerous. If you're gone and you're a little bit hurt, Blake Caparello can put you to sleep. Let's make it official by going centering to Howard Lee. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The time, the time referee, Ignatius Misilatus, stop the contest. Two minutes, 58 seconds into round seven. You win it by TKO, a new Australian light heavyweight champion, Bomber Blake Caparello. Blake Caparello victorious, Michael Van Nimwegen in just his seventh pro fight will be back and I have no doubts will hold Australian gold at some stage. One man who is hoping to once again hold world championship gold is our very own green machine. Danny Green up against the champion Christoph Vladarczyk for the WBC Cruiserweight title that is coming up, but more immediately, Irma Selly Albert, Sam Solomon for the IBF middleweight title. Check out all the details on mainevent.com.au from Challenge Stadium in Perth, live at 7:30 p.m. Eastern. It is Wednesday, November 30. After the disappointment, personally and professionally, of the Antonio Tava loss, Danny Green is determined to once again be the man standing on top of the heap. That is Wednesday, November 30. Up next, main event time on Friday Night Fights.
new Australian light heavyweight champion. His name is Blake Caparello. After the referees stopped the contest late in the seventh. A huge night for that young man as we move to our main event, part of the IBF middleweight box off series and eliminator over 12 three minute rounds. Eramaselli Albert up against Sam King Solomon. Solomon competing in his 50th professional bout is one year the senior of his opponent. Born in Nigeria, based in the United States of America. The big difference here is height, nine centimetres in favour of the visitor. Time to get the boys out because it is time for our main event. Let's go to Howard Lee. Thank you very much Andy, 12 rounds of boxing, an official eliminator for the IBF middleweight championship of the world, sanctioned by Sugar Ray Wheatley, with Australia's IBF world middleweight champion Daniel Gillette, ringside part of Fox Sports. Would you welcome ladies and gentlemen, challenger number one to the red corner from Florida Var, Nigeria, Eromus Lee Albert. Then mama, I said what mama did they keep? Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome into the blue corner, proudly representing Australia, Sam King Solomon. The United States of America and Australia. Please be upstanding and observe quiet, please, in respect of the national anthems of our respective countries.
Medical Sports in conjunction with Simmons Homes. Welcome you to the main event of the evening at the Melbourne Pavilion. Brian Amatruda, 25 big shows this evening. 12 by 3 minute rounds of boxing. And an official eliminator for the IBF middleweight championship of the world. World champion Daniel Gill, the real Gill at ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to rock? Are you ready to box? 12 rounds of boxing. Would you welcome in the red corner from Miami, Florida via his native country of Nigeria. Fought a great battle for the IBF Championship against Daniel Gill in Hobart on August 31. He's 37 years young. Head coach Doug Bollier Nats. Ladies and gentlemen, the dual Olympian for Nigeria, 1996 and 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, professional boxing career. 30 fights, 24 wins, five losses, one draw, 12 inside the distance. At 72.15 kilograms, wearing vivid green with white and red ladies and gentlemen welcome back to Australia the bad boy Aramosole and across the ring from Seaford Victoria celebrated his 38th birthday last Sunday with Johnny the boxer John Locko in the corner 15 years a professional boxer. He's won two or ten championships. Ladies and gentlemen, fought Mundine three times. Big names Eastman, Winky Wright, Saki Obika. Ranked number six by Ray Whitley in the IBF World Rankings at 72.25 kilograms, leaving no stone unturned. Known as the King, red, white, and black. He's Sam King. Sullivan! Your referee, Charlie Lucas, from Cronulla, New South Wales. Judge Ignatius Miscellanus, Victoria. Would you welcome from Bangkok, Thailand, Judge Somsak Syrianant. And from the United States, Washington, D.C. He's officiated in more than 100 world title bouts, Mr. Glenn Hamada from the United States of America. Ray Wheatley, the supervisor. Here's your referee, Charlie Lucas, to give referees instructions. Okay. Come here. Right, I've already spoken to you in the dressing room. Remember, obey my instructions at all times. Defend yourself at all times. Remember, they come to see you fight. They don't come to see me referee. 12 rounds, touch them up. Okay. 12 rounds as part of the IBF middleweight box-off. The winner here gets a shot at Ghana's Ozzy Adama, who stopped a fading Roman Karmazan. Another one of Daniel Gill's victims in nine rounds. Karmazan in front at the time from all reports, but winner of this fight, Adama. The winner of that is up against our mate in commentary tonight. A pleasure to have the real deal, Daniel Gill, the IBF middleweight champion of the world. Calling the action to you at home on Fox Sports and also getting a first-hand look at maybe one of the men that he'll be fighting in early to mid-2012. Nice little uppercut from Sam Solomon early. He played the part well, the rocky part, as he walked into the ring. And if okay. Emma Sally Elbert doesn't use his feet in this fight, we're going to see a lot of this. Yeah, it's going to get a little bit messy, I reckon. And there is a huge chance of a head clash somewhere and somewhere early. Could be Albert, everything. Albert keeps coming forward and Solomon with unbelievable upper body movement. Okay. Sammy hasn't been in the ring since September of last year at TKO 10 round victory over Pradeep Singh. Won the vacant IBF Pan Pacific title during that match, or in that match, should I say. Yeah, we called that fight. It was out of the, uh, the race course. Yep. Oh, what happened? A head clash. Stop. Albert's claiming a head clash. Okay. Box. 
Bad boy, not happy. Oh, dug down the opposite side with Sam Solomon. His angles are amazing. Sam Solomon in the red and black trunks. He's already frustrated Emma Sally Albert. We saw in, uh, if you've watched the James Kirkland fight, Albert gets caught with the, the uppercut and goes down, gets finished in the first round. Yep. So I'm guessing that's why Sam Solomon's using that punch so much early on here in the first round or later on now. Going to the body, Albert, as Solomon goes over the top. Almost a rugby league style tackle there from the American. Look at the eyes on Albert. Silly Albert. He, they are full of bad intentions. How did you stand there for 36 minutes? <laughs> I would have filled my duds and walked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's getting very frustrated, isn't he? What a rough and tough first round. Some head crashes, some shoulder charges, plenty of leather thrown in the opening three minutes. You're, you're laying back, you're not like you're not popping your jab on like you were in the dressing room. Okay? Listen. As we have a look at the head clash that Emma Sally Elbert claimed, didn't seem to be much in it. Real small amount. Maybe just trying to let the referee know that it's not as comfortable as he wants it to be. 37 years of age in his 31st fight, so he's been around the block once or twice as Aramisili Albert. Currently ranked at 13 in the IBF. That is the organisation we are fighting under the banner of tonight. Oh, good counter left hook from Sam Solomon. There's some snap in that. Gilly, what did you find Emma Sally Albert's best point when you fought him? Uh, I, I found, you know, that, that constant pressure, you know, he's always going to be in your face. That, that was probably his best asset. I, I found him fairly easy to hit. Like, yep. he's always, always going to be in front of you to hit. It, it's just a matter of picking the punches and making sure that, you know, you get him in a position where he can't hit you afterwards. Sam's done a pretty good job of that at the moment. He's... Uh, Frustrating Albert uh, and not letting him catch him with the counter attacks. Yep, that's an understatement. That's right. <laughs> that said, and I'm not just saying it because he's sitting next to us, I've said it on broadcasts for the last 12 months. I don't think there is a middleweight, and I'm looking through the list at the moment from Sergio Martinez at one down to Corey Spinks at 17. I don't think there's a middleweight in the world that beats Daniel Gill. No. I, I, when you when you're on, there's certainly some real good fights to be made there, isn't there? Sergio Martinez will be an absolute cracker. Yeah, that's one that we're looking at. So hopefully, also the opportunity of Dimitri Pirov potentially a unification bout. He seems to have a scratch or a small nick under his left eye. Does Emma Sally Albert? Oh, Sammy Solomon. We're just going a little bit of tailoring from Charlie Lucas. Out of it. It's never going to be a pretty fight. When we, oh, when we say it was never going to be a pretty fight, that, that's not being disrespectful. That's not saying it's a bad fight, but it's a genuine fight. It's, it's not two boxes. It, this is a fight. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, too conventional or too pretty. Right. But if Sam Solomon tried to box and make it pretty, he would make it a lot easier for uh, Emma Sally Albert. So yeah. he's got to make it untidy. I said in the opener, his awkwardness is his bonus. As you know, untidy as it gets sometimes, no fighter can handle what he brings to the ring. 
and he's using that uppercut really well too. Yeah, there's big gaps there with the uppercut, and if he keeps landing, he might do some damage. I think, you know, I think from memory, the second fight with Anthony Mundine showed how you've got to beat Sam Solomon. You must keep him off at your distance. Don't let Sam come in. Try and catch, you know, Sam at the end of your punch. An amazing athlete, Sam Solomon. Won his first Australian title in his second fight at Cruiserweight with a victory over Peter Kinsella. His next fight, he lost to Kevin Kelly for the Australian oh, Commonwealth Junior Middleweight title. Let's take a look at the world highway rankings as they stand at the moment. Sergio Martinez up the top, Felix Stern, the WBA super champ. Danny Eel, the IBF, Dimitri Pirog, WBO. Ozzy Adama, in part of this IBF eliminator, Gennady Golovkin. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in there as well. So it is a quality list that goes down genuinely to the top 20 or 25. Our very own Garth Wood is cemented in at number 19 currently. Has there been any talk of yourself with Gennady Golovkin? Uh, there, there has been a little bit of talk. Uh, not that much. I mean, uh, extremely yeah. talented fighter and great fighter. He's, he's a guy that I actually fought in the amateurs. And uh, is that in Asia? Uh, in Japan. In Japan. Yeah. 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 Did you win? No, he beat me in, over there. So yeah, he's yeah. a good boy. Yeah. I'd love to get that one back. Poor old Sebastian Sylvester. Since his date with destiny has dropped down to number 24 in the rankings. Did he lose another fight after you, I think, yeah, as yep. well, so that's yeah, going to yeah. happen, yeah. Well, these two guys are both looking to head north on the ladder with a victory here tonight and an opportunity first at Adama and then maybe even at Daniel Gill. Solomon's just really frustrating Emma Sally Albert, punching from everywhere is Sam Solomon. His work rate is tremendous. hands are low though, he's, he's given Albert a target. Yep, he is, and the chin's high. Two things you don't want to do in a boxing ring. A long time manager and confidant, Stewie Duncan, will be watching on tonight. Cheering his former charge on. Just over a minute remaining, round number three. It's awkward and frustrating as we thought it may have been. Not frustrating for us, frustrating for the athletes involved. Well, one athlete, yeah. I think. I don't think <laughs> yeah. Sam's too worried. This is the way he fights. <laughs> Albert with 50% knockout, 50% on points. Sammy Solomon, 39 wins, just the 17 knockouts. I've got to say, the last few times I've seen Sam Solomon, he looks a lot stronger than he did earlier on in his career. Yeah. It's looking like Fatih's going to play a big factor in this fight. Yeah, Sam's got his mouth open, even though he's doing most of the work, as he has a cheeky grin down at Andy Raymond. But uh, his mouth's open, but I guess that's Sam. He does that all the time. Sam now has a really big mouse on the left eye. Oh, oh. Solomon down! And a slip rule. I think he okay, stood on box. the foot of Sam Solomon.
I'm happy to go with the referee's ruling. Okay, stay there, stay there. Charlie Lucas, our third man in centre ring. Glenn Hamada, Ignatius Misalides, and Somkak Syrianak, our three international ringside judges. If you want to keep up to date on what's happening on Fox Sports Friday Night Fights or Saturday Night Fights, as is the case tomorrow, join me on Twitter. And we would love to hear your thoughts on what is happening and what you want to see for the start of 2012. A oh, good uppercut from Sam Solomon. Something I like as well, Gilly, that we spoke about off camera earlier on is I know we need sponsorships in the sport, but we don't see any sponsorship tonight in the centre of the ring. We haven't had people slipping over. I think there's got to be a better way to get that sponsorship logos out there. It's such a dangerous part of the sport when the boys get sweaty and it gets slippery in there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, there's got to be another way. I mean, there's got to be a way that they can maybe print the sponsorship on the mat that, that doesn't make it slippery when it gets wet. I yeah. think that, that's got to be important because I, I know from personal experience, it is extremely slip, slippery. You don't yeah. even want to go near the, the signage when it's wet. Yeah, I remember one fight. I, I worked around the whole outside of the ring, not trying to, to go in that centre spot. I saw Jared Thatcher recently on the Mick at Seed, undercard slip over, nearly tear a groin. One other time slipped and had a head clash at the same time and got a cut from yeah. it. All the heads come together yeah. there. They certainly did as both boys rip away to the body. Only five losses in a decorated career to Albert. But twice the experience centering as far as rounds per fighter is concerned. Albert, 204 professional rounds coming into tonight. Sammy Solomon, 425. Amazing. Albert tag there everyone. with the right hand. Break! Step back, don't punch. I think, I think Sammy's starting to find it a little bit harder to be able to counter punch him and keep him off. Uh, Albert's constant pressure is taking a bit of a toll. Yeah, that's right, yep. This is going to be a huge test of endurance, stamina, and will as this continues. There's nothing more tiring than this style of fight. Yeah, nothing's clean about it. It's, uh, Good body shot there couple of from shots. <laughs> Fighting for the right to have a crack at the world champion. We've got a world champion in action tomorrow night with Billy Dibb. Of course, at the end of the month on main event boxing, the green machine, Danny Green, once again attempts to get that 16 pounds of gold around his waist. What a card that is, the Danny Green card. Three world titles. Danny Green, Chris John and Will Tomlinson on the one night. Up and comer Matty Garland on the card as well. Sammy Solomon and Pradeep Singh last time out. I think they may have should have swapped the gloves for the little four ounces. Because there was a little bit of MMA involved in this one as well. <laughs> that for an armbar or a triangle choke. That was an entertaining one to call. What's the body shot from Sam Solomon? Boom, there it is. Sammy Solomon, Hermeselli Albert. Solomon in the red and black. Albert in the green and white. Australia versus the United States. Oh, oh, over the top was Albert. The best shot from Albert so far. They've done a real good job, Daniel, of Sam Solomon's left eye and eyelid in that corner because a couple of rounds ago, it looked like it was about to pop. Yeah, it's dangerous if it closes up, so they've done a great job. Well, we saw that with Victor Oganoff. Importance of a good corner. Proactive corner. A win over former world champ, Yori Boy Campus, Jermaine Saunders. 
standards, should I say, for young Albert. Hold on, boys. Hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, boys. Back into it we go. Resetting centre ring. Solomon looking to go over the top. Albert goes straight forward. Yeah, not a bad right hand again there from uh, Albert. Good jab from Solomon. Oh, what happened? His shoulder's dislocated. Oh, he's popping the shoulder out. He's ready to go again. He's just popped his shoulder back in centre ring. Oh, boy. Myself, I dislocated my shoulders at least 15 times each side. Two full shoulder reconstructions. That guy's in some pain at the moment. One tough sucker. Nice uppercut there from Solomon. Is he going to be able to use that left hand effectively? Well, the answer so far is yes. He's trying to lock it in, but it's really weirdly locked in, actually. Take a look at that at the end of this round. Nice right hand there from Solomon. You really can't afford to get into that grapple with Sam Solomon now because it will just be tearing. Once the they pain. move, they move. Albert just swatting with the left hand at the moment. Wow, real toughness from Amasali Albert. Goes to the body to Sam Solomon. Solomon's work rate, still up very high. 38 years of age, look at him. He's got the body of a 21-year-old in great shape, Sam Solomon, as is Amasali Albert. They're both boys very well put together. Hello, boys. Albert with one arm still keep coming forward. <laughs> oh, Charlie Lucas, our referee almost took a left hook. Albert back to the corner and in a wall of hurt with that left shoulder. As we have a look what went on with Emisali Albert with that dislocation of his left shoulder, just caught him on the back of it. Then it must just click back into joint. Looking at the left shoulder of the man in green. Oh, it just got him at a real weird angle. Has it popped out? And popped back in it. Oh. Very common thing. Second round, round six. You can have that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> He's got shoulders like cinder blocks, doesn't he? Look at the size of them. Six in our main event. Solomon going for a wild right uppercut. He's working on the inside now, favour Sam Solomon. More so than it did before. Yeah. Probably rough him up a little bit more if, yeah. if that's possible. Daniel, do you target the left shoulder? Are, are, are you happy to hit the left shoulder? 100%. Yep. Yes, for sure. But you got, you got to understand, Albert. Albert's limited now in what he can do, so Stop. Solomon's got to take advantage of that. He, he knows he can't throw that left properly, so he's got to, he's got to work to that side a little bit more and, and score from that side. Yeah, I think exactly right. Capitalise on the damage. He walked into one there, did Albert. Oh, was that low? Oh. South of the belly button, but north of where it counts. Great, great. Let him up. Let him up. Step back and punch. Okay, fuck. Stop, stop. stop. Couldn't do anything okay, there. Fox. It's such a dangerous way, Sam Solomon. Does. He, he lets his punches go, but comes in straight behind him. And how yeah, there hasn't been a bad cut or, or a nice uppercut from Solomon. Great. Let him up. Keep 
Gilly, you fought Emma Sally Albert. There could be an opportunity down the track that you may have to fight Sam Solomon. Yep. What would be your well? What would you see of Sam Solomon? What you know, obviously you would fight your style, but yeah. what would you have to look out for from Sam Solomon? I mean, obviously you don't want to fall into his trap. Uh, he, he sort of sucks you into a trap, and if if you fall into that. He'll have his way, and uh, just what he's doing with Albert, he's yeah. frustrating him, he's hitting him in close with those little shots. Yeah. Just, just doing enough to win the rounds as well. Yep. Um, but that, that's what you don't want to do. Yep, yep. You don't make him fight your fight, get him out of his comfort zone. Yep. Again, working from the inside, Solomon. 30 seconds remaining, round number six. Debut oh. all the way back in April 1997. Sam Solomon with a four-round victory over Heath Stenton right here in Melbourne. Heath Stenton, there's a the name from yep. the past, a blast from the past. Very tough young fella. I think uh, he fought Anthony Mundine himself in yep. about Mundine's fourth fight from memory. He can't take him, Sam. He can't keep up with you, buddy. That's why he's leaning forward. He's trying to grab you. Okay? He can't keep up with you. He's just got to give himself a bit more room on the angles. Stop going back. Right? He's expecting the right uppercut all the time. I can't see how my left eye come. Let me come. Come, let me. All right. You're doing well, Sam. Now we, we want can, it. We can so go a bit on the left hand side, too. One, two, left. Hook right. We want to keep, we want, exactly Sam, we want to keep neat and tidy brother. You're looking good, you're feeling good. All we got to keep doing is keeping your composure, I'm good. Halfway through our main event, six rounds down, six rounds remain. If you didn't catch what Sam Solomon was saying there, he was acting out the Rocky movie, I think it was Rocky 3. I can't see out of my left eye, Mick, cut me Mick. Certainly puffed up, hasn't it? I think they've done a great job with it because 15 minutes ago, I thought it was going to pop everywhere. Yeah, well, he's in great spirits to think of that in the middle of a fight. Do his own uh, commentary. One thing that amazes... Oh, sorry. You've got to be very careful of getting too relaxed and letting the guard down against Albert here. Because as we saw in Tasmania against Daniel Gill, once Eromaselli moves up into second or third gear, it doesn't go back down. He doesn't stop. He doesn't slow. One thing that amazed me was Sam Solomon. He, he doesn't have the best balance, and he, he's, his feet are sort of all over the shop, but he, allow, he somehow gets his punches off and lands them cleanly. And as we have a look uh, down on the feet, you'll see Sam Solomon's balance and feet aren't under him very often, and he seems to get his punches off well. Changing levels, first shot to the body, second hand up high. Good right hand from Sam Solomon. Excellent combination from Sam Solomon. And see what Solomon can do here for that near side, that left arm of Albert that was injured earlier. It doesn't seem to be hampering him too much no. now. A combination punch that I saw Sam Solomon's used a few times so far that I think he may, you know, keep is the left rip, left hook. He's had a lot of success with it and it's just fell short from being really powerful. It's, it's not far off the mark. Okay, box. 57, 50 seconds, should I say, left in the seventh. Sammy Solomon's 51st pro bout. Is he working that left arm on the inside and the clinches? On the no. quick side, should Emma Sally Albert aim at that, that left eye of Sam Solomon, try and keep sending that right hand over as much as he can and try and, you know, limit the vision from Sam Solomon. Yeah. 
He has had a bit of a bit of success. Oh, there you go. Again. Oh, is Sammy just a little wobbly there late in the seventh? Right, right, stop, stop. Oh. It was a good right hand from Albert. Yeah, it certainly was. Oh, and that left eye seven. of Solomon getting worse by the round. Mention his right hand, Aramiselli Albert. And it wasn't often Geely, but you tasted it a few times. Yeah, he had a bit of power there. You know, I had to keep away as much as possible because he's constant pressure on that, but uh, yeah, he definitely had a bit of power. The feeling of carrying the belt in your home state, enormous. Yeah, unbelievable. And the crowd down there were so good. Uh, yeah. I've never fought in front of a crowd like that before. And, you know, it, it's awesome. It's a credit to the Tasmanian people for coming, coming out for that fight and uh, supporting me that much. And so they should. You're their champion. They should be out supporting you. Out of there, blue corner. Wait. Wait for it, boys. Box. Here we go, round number eight. Sam Solomon in the red and black. Marked up big time now over that left eye. His lead eye as well. Aramiselli Albert, Nigerian two-time Olympian, Commonwealth Games silver medalist, national champion, who's now based in Miami, Florida. He's in the green and Oh, not since up. the opening round as Albert put it into reverse. He just right, boys, right. shuffles back, forward, back. pushes forward. He knows one way. Yep, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Stop. Stop. I would have loved to see Albert bring something different. I would have loved to see him use the jab. Box on the back foot, back foot, box at distance a little bit and see what he could have done to Sam Solomon. This is clashing of styles. As Solomon digs a good combination. Oh, Sammy's been tagged here. Yeah, stop, stop. You've got to keep them up, Sammy. He didn't load them. Yeah. I thought Sam up, almost okay? launched him to hold on to Edramaselli there. Maybe not. going to make it awfully difficult to see out of that lead eye in another two rounds. Yep. You're not going to see the shots coming. Oh, a good right hand from Albert. Both guys with good chins have each only been stopped once in their career. And to Sammy Solomon, that was Anthony Mundine in one of the three fights that he had with, with Anthony. I think you'll find Albert was James Kirkland in the first round. First round, exactly right. So, so Gilly, do you do uh, much homework on your opponent, or do you leave that up to your team? Or no, I do. I do yeah, I watch a, f a fair few of my opponents' fires. And, uh... Here we go, opening up latter stages of round number eight. Yeah, so you do. Yeah, yeah, I do a fair bit of homework on my opponent. I think it's an important part. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I also, I like to sit down and watch watch the the fights with my coach as well, Graham, and uh, even my manager Bill, and uh, just just to check things out. They see something a little bit different. I see something different. But uh, yeah, I think that definitely is an important part of it. Yeah. Getting serious now, final four rounds coming your way on Friday Night Fights, part of the IBF Box Off Series. Let's check out... Oh, a little left hand. No wonder Sammy stumbled a little bit. 
Sam Jr. took one. Of course you're fresh. You're ready, you're gonna know this basket. Seven seconds out to round nine. Out of there, blue corner. Wait for it, wait for it, step back. Hey, Tadma. Here we go, round number nine. <laughs> 38 last Sunday, the King Sam Solomon. Oh, good body shot from Solomon. He waits it nicely, he moves nicely, delivering that left rip, doesn't he? That's one of his best shots, actually, watching Sam Solomon. He throws the left rip better than he throws any other punch. Albert's just there for it as well. He's coming forward, but he's not doing anything. Took one there on the chin, Albert, and response. It was a good Ooh. receipt from Aaron Maselli. Good shots from both fighters there. Really for the fight fans at home, what, what tip would you give a young up-and-comer? What's your best point you would give someone? I, I think the biggest thing I'd, I'd try and remember is, is to make sure you, you want to do that little bit extra. I mean, fitness is such a massive part of, of boxing. Uh, early on especially, you, you want the fitness to be up. That helps you to learn a lot more. So do, do a little bit extra. Train a little bit harder. Train a little bit more than you think your opponent would be. Yep, That's you. something that always pushed me on a little bit. and. Uh, now hopefully it's what, what still pushes me out now. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. That little 4% extra. That's it. Opening up in middle stages, round number nine. Solomon with some good combination punches. Pushed back out of the exchange there. Albert again trying to attack the body inside the clinch. Dirty boxing on the inside here. Sam throws that punch, then ends up chest on chest again. Still frustrating the American. Oh, the right uppercut from Solomon. Oh. Signs of singing Solomon. Okay, box. Aaron Maselli didn't honestly think that was going to be ruled a knockdown, did he? He protested a little. He could protest a lot. If he didn't get it on the first knockdown or, or yeah. claim of a knockdown, he certainly wasn't going to get it on that one. Nice left hook from Solomon. Neither guy has been hard to find at any stage in this matchup. It has not stopped. Hasn't always been clean and crisp. Such a physical battle too. These guys are going to be sore for us. Oh, yeah. Week, weeks after. Oh, yeah. Well, Sam's to give him a 60 second breather. A well earned one in that. It gets a little scrappy at times, a little messy, but as we try and find the better parts, and that was it, the left rip from Sam Solomon. He throws it nicely, doesn't he? Perfect. As Daniel Gill said, the conclusion of the previous round, both guys are going to be sick, sore and sorry for some time following this one. And we've still got nine minutes of action remaining. Yeah, it can be a tough way to earn your paycheck at times, that's for sure. I would try and I would hate to predict with any real certainty what can happen in the nine minutes and where this is headed. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Back into the corner, but he does a nice job of freeing himself to Solomon. As 
we watch what we've seen throughout the 10 rounds so far as Emma's Ali Albert walking forward trying to back Sam Solomon up. He just can't quite get Sam onto the end of the punch. Very needs him. Sam's so crafty and awkward. As I said earlier, he'd give anyone nightmares, this guy. Launches with a one strike. Gets out of there. Albert's moving his feet a little bit this round. He's uh, looking a little bit better. It's not, not so much uh, clinching going on. Yeah, and it puts Sam Solomon a little bit out of range and distance. And, you know, he has to readapt trying to find uh, and the Sally Albert again. As Solomon holds on, Emma Sally Albert tries to dig in. Solomon, nice turn. Yeah, it was a nice turn now. Sam doesn't want to hold. Great position. Fast hands. Albert looks at him and says, you're not hurting me, you can't hurt me, so let's go again. Under a minute remaining, round number 10. For Irma Silly Albert, in his last five fights, he's four and one. The only loss was last start. Danny Gill in August of this year, down in Hobart. Oh, good right hand. Yeah, good right hand from Solomon. It's a wonder we haven't seen uh, Solomon or even Emma Sally Albert get a few warnings for holding this round. Don't hold. I actually thought Sam's done most of the holding this round, but yeah, hard to pick sometimes. Three punch combination. Looking for that left rip. There we go again, and Sam Solomon holding. Gee, they're having a crack, aren't they? These Certainly. two. Okay, let's go. I bet you know they use your right way. Not only right today, you don't defend that. Maybe not the for sure, I'm fenter. Don't fenter, you come on that right. Now you talk about you. Okay. Championship rounds. We move into round number 11 and Sam Solomon in the opposite corner using every available second. During the 60-second intermission. Left eye up like a balloon on the man in red and black. Stop, 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 stop. Step back. Okay, box. Unusual earlier in the fight where it appeared that Irma Silly Albert put his shoulder out and then it snap back in or fell back in or crack back in some 15 seconds later could have been what you hear a lot of the rugby league players talk about they get a stinger it could have been a stinger it could have been nerve damage okay, didn't bother him too much though no. <laughs> he's fought on a little cautious with the left hand for the round and a half following that but since there's no real evidence that it's bothering him Sam Solomon's reflexes are, are pretty decent for his age, that's for sure. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but he's got very fast reflexes when he wants, Sam Solomon. He's a natural athlete, Sammy. Isn't he? Yeah, very much so. Former kickboxing star, ISKA and WKA world champion, before turning his hand. He was probably one of the first to turn his hand to boxing when he did in 97. Yeah, 
I was like like you mentioned before though, Chris, like he, he, even though he gets himself off balance, he seems as though he's off balance, he's still able to throw a punch and even land a punch. Yeah, and I think that's what's so frustrating for all the people who fight him. You, you think you're safe or there's no way he can hit you and all of a sudden he hits you with three or four and you don't even know what's going on. And then he's gone too. Yeah, and then he's gone yeah. holding you. Minute remaining in the 11th. What are the three ringside judges looking for? Volume of punches, cleaner punches, work rate, uh, ring generalship. What percentage they put in each of them? Well, I think the first three of those, even though it gets, it's untidy and it's messy, they are in Sam Solomon's favour. He is doing most of the work, even though he's holding a little bit and it's getting untidy in wrestling. But he is throwing more, more of the punches and he is landing most of the punches, only because he's so awkward and hard to find. Is up underneath the swollen eyelid, Sam Solomon looking for the next right hand that's going to be thrown his way. Into the clinch they go in the final seconds of the 11th round. Three minutes gone, three minutes remain. He's gonna come all out for you. Sam, okay? mate. Sam, he's only got one choice, and that's the bum rush shot. You keep it neat, you keep it tidy. You're picking him off all night, okay, brother? And turn. Hit him and turn. They are the biggest feel, heels in Australia. And it's a bit of a struggle and has been all night walking around in those things. The credit to her, she's been in and out of the ring all night, and it hasn't changed her style of walk. You probably even Sammy Solomon hasn't noticed that. Everyone else in the auditorium has, but Sammy Solomon now in a silly Albert embrace after 11 with three remaining. Three minutes of torture. Solomon starts with a good flush right hand. Yeah, and thank you. Game. Nice right well hooks from Sam Solomon here at the start of round number 12. Oh, and digs that left rip, his best punch. Someone's mouth guard has gone, Sammy Solomon I think it is. That's Sarah Maselli Alberts. Solomon backs away and still throws punches. They started like this almost 40 minutes ago. It continues. the remove from Sam Solomon, the back hook on the outside, showing good skills here, he's got a, got a bit left yet, inside oh. the two minute mark, Solomon takes one, as both guys have done for the majority of the night, they are giving one to, happy to take one, as long as they get the next. Shots and Solomon changing yeah, his levels shot. nicely. Incredible cardiovascular condition for these two guys at 37, 38 years of age apiece. Still whacking them away with every two punch combination, Solomon. 60 seconds remain as part of the IBF middleweight box off series for a shot at the champion Daniel Gill down the track. Is there a Maselli Albert going to be two visits to the land down under? An 0 and 2. Yeah, I'm not a judge, but I'm, my guess is it's uh, Sam Solomon's had the best, you know, parts of the fight. Inside the 30 now, Albert 
desperate, not daunted. He's been frustrated from the opening bell as he launches a straight right hand. And the crowd are right behind the local guy, Sam Solomon, now. As we move into the last 15 seconds, both guys can walk out of the pavilion here tonight with their heads held high because it has been individual performances and collectively a great fight to end our night here on Friday Night Fight. Congratulations to both men, their corners and their supporters. And we are going to the judges' scorecards. Ignatius Missalades from Thailand, Somsak Syrianat. And from the United States, Mr. Glenn Hamada. Here's what the 12th and final round produced. Pretty much what we saw from round one through till the final round. Okay, thank you for playing out of boxing. Round number 20, Barry Noble Sports. Congratulations, Ryan. 25 minute shows today. Both guys tried their hearts out, pushed all the way through till the end of the fight, and credit to them. You have a 36 minute test of endurance, the ultimate test of endurance in a, an individual sport. It's lonely, it's frustrating. It is brutal at times. Tomorrow night we're live again, 8 p.m. Fox Sports 3 Bell Time. Our main event, the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. The first title defense of Billy the Kid Dipper up against Italian Alberto Silverde, undefeated. That is tomorrow night. The best of Aussie boxing, 2011, Saturday, the 24th of December. First showing at 5.30 p.m. on Fox 2 and 2 HD, three hours of the best you will ever see. And the big one, Danny Green, Christoph Vladancic for the WBC Cruiserweight Championship of the World, live from Danny's backyard, Challenge Stadium in Perth, Western Australia, 7.30 p.m. bell time, that's Eastern Daylight Saving Time, Wednesday, November 20, you can see all the action, Main Event TV and Fox Sports venues. Check out the website at maineventcomau for details. It is decision time centering, so let's go into the middle with Howard Lee. Thank you, Andy. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, our Main Event score totals. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Ignatius Misalaitis, 117-111. Somsak Surinana from Bangkok, Thailand, 118-110. Final card from Mr. Glenn Amata, Washington State, USA, 116-112. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Blue Connor, Sam King Solomon. Unanimous points decision, Sam King Solomon. He will now fight. Ozzy Adama for the right to challenge Daniel Gill. Who, what's your prediction there? What happens Adama and Sam Solomon? Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Adama, so it's going to be going to be an interesting fight. But if Sam can do what he done against anybody like that tonight, then he's going to make it very difficult. But uh, you know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But I think that that fight has to be very soon. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We move one step closer to potentially an all-Aussie IBF middleweight title fight. Let's go over the results for tonight. Pre-telecast, Justin Maduro, Dylan Sadaki, a draw. It was also a draw. Caesar Amonsot and Solomon Egberheim. Brad Pitt and Victor Oganov fought out a TKO war. In the fifth, Brad Pitt, victorious, he continues his winning ways. Blake Caparello won the vacant Australian Light Heavyweight Championship from Michael Van Nimwegen. The referee stopping the contest just in seven rounds. We went 36 minutes in the main event. Sam Solomon victorious over Eramaselli Albert. That was our main event.
What a year 2011 has been. And our second last domestic broadcast of the year tonight. Don't forget, we're live again tomorrow night from Sydney. Billy Dib, the main event with the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. Tonight, though, Brad Pitt, Blake Caparello and Sam Solomon are all smiles. Four live fights, four main events, and they were beauties. Hope you've enjoyed all the action on behalf of Chris McCullen and Daniel Gill. I'm Andy Raymond. Catch you next time on Fox Sports Friday Night Fights.